Attention data and science-driven fitness fanatics. The following is crystal clear. The data shows this 100%. An active spiritual or religious practice makes you healthier, makes you happier, and contributes significantly to longevity. So if you preach data, you preach science, you say, look, you gotta look at the data, look at the science. This is what tells you the truth. Then you have to grapple with the following a spiritual and religious practice that you're active in is good for you. Look into it. This one I love because when you're, when you talk to the data, the people like to pull up the data. This is the data shows. This is what the data shows. It shows if you eat this way, it shows if you exercise like this, if you, and they can be actually quite, they can be zealots about this. Bring this to them and watch them squirm. Okay. Well, the data shows that people with an active religious practice, people who go to church every Sunday or people have a spiritual practice that they're active in, across the board are happier, less anxious, stay married longer, better parents, uh, they uh, have better health, they're less likely to smoke, less likely to drink, less likely to go to jail. The data is clear on this. Do you have a practice like this since you're yeah. so data-driven and then you watch them squirm in their chair? I love that unless it's an abusive cult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Twin Flames. Right. I'm count. totally into it. We'll get to that later, but I just want to throw that in there just to make sure. Does it, does it count? Do Heaven's think, Gate? Okay, do yeah. you think, though, there's a bit of like a like a correlation there with just like the studies that come out, that come out about like what a multivitamin can do for you? And it's like, well, it's less about the multivitamin. It's that somebody has this practice that they take a, a pill every single day. They're more likely also to make healthier choices, to exercise, do that. Do you think there's some sort of correlation there that if you have a spiritual practice, it's less about the spirituality or, or whatever. It's just the you fact just have that- a lot more discipline. Yeah, you have discipline to make better choices. I, I, this is the way that they try to explain it. So if you pull this up and you look at the data, you'll get lots of um, articles, uh, psychology, um, articles, articles on human behavior, science articles. And then what they'll do is they'll try to point to those things. They'll say, okay, why does the data show this? Well, there's a lot of community because they go to church every Sunday. So they meet with people every, every week. Mm -hmm. um, they get help when they need it, or people are more likely to see that they need help because they're so connected. They're more disciplined to look at certain things. So that's the, that's the argument, the, the way that they try to explain it away. Fine. That's totally valid. Truth is, all that's good. Well, it's, and right, and, and I, okay, that's all totally valid. <clears throat> Here's the point that I try to make. Would, can we separate that from what spirituality and religion provides, which is the belief in the transcendent, which is the belief in something greater than themselves? And I don't necessarily think you can separate the two. I haven't seen yet data to show that you can necessarily separate those. For example, it would be like trying to separate the practice of fitness and health from the belief that you are worthy of, of being healthier, that you're somebody that's worthy of being taken care of, right? Mm. Try to follow a fitness and health journey and try to do that through self-hate, like a lot of people might get caught up in, right? Where they hate their body, they hate themselves. But they're like, but I'm doing all the practices. I'm still working out. I'm still eating right. Yet their health doesn't reflect it like somebody who's doing it with the, with a different intention, with the right intention. Mm. So I don't know. I'm not making the argument mm. necessarily that you have to believe in the transcendent. All I'm saying is the data is very clear on this. What? Explain it away all you want. The data is very clear on this. And so if you're data driven, you, you have to grapple with this and you have to say to your, and if you're very focused on your own health and fitness, like this is what I do. I really believe in this and I want to help others. Why ignore this? There's almost nothing that shows the positive effects across the board like that. Like how, it, it makes everything. How strong is it as far as the data? How strong is it connected? And is it, how does it compare to uh, a diet or how does it compare to exercise or how does it compare to other forms of improving yourself or being healthier? So for life quality, it contributes significantly. Um, for anxiety and depression, it contributes significantly and it seems to contribute to everything else. So when people quit smoking, they get healthier, right? But when people have an active spiritual practice or an, uh, an active religious practice, they're less likely to smoke. They're also less likely to eat in a particular way. They're less likely, by the way, I know people right now are like, well, I know somebody goes to church. Well, I know someone's going to, I know somebody goes to church that does all these things. Yeah. Obviously this is a broad, you know, we're looking at broad data, but you're less likely to do the things that aren't good for you. And you're more likely to do the things that are good for you. And you're, and this is a, this is really important because mindset, in my opinion, I think most coaches and trainers who've been working with people for a long time will tell you mindset's everything. Mm -hmm. It changes your frame. Everything seems different. The things that seemed to be stressful before now seem look to be more like blessings. Like, oh my God, all these kids are so 
oh my God, it's so busy. I don't have time for myself. And then you have this spiritual practice. And you go, oh my God, this is amazing. Like the, the, having kids is amazing. This is, a, this is a worthwhile trade. Like going to the clubs was not nearly as uh, you know fulfilling as being here with my kids. So the trade becomes more <coughs> worthwhile. And this is, again, this is based, this is not just my experience. This is based off of when you look at the actual data, what it seems to say. It seems to change the mindset and the frame around things, which has a profound effect on depression, anxiety, your perception of pain. That's another one. Like, yeah. you know, how, how pain affects you changes when you have these practices. There was I heard, some data on that. Yeah. I heard an interesting uh, talk. I think it was, I, I forget. It was like this scientist and I think it was between him and Jordan Pearson. They're talking about like even statisticians and like data driven people, like they have to make moral decisions all the way through and parsing through all yeah. of the numbers and like where it comes from. And like, if it's following like my own bias and how do I remove my own bias and how do I, you know, how do I make all these moral decisions to, to, uh, uh, account for, um, you know, the result that I'm, I'm achieving through all of that. And so it's like, even through that lens, like you're, you're going to have to make a lot of like moral driven, uh, decision. You know, so you brought something up. I don't think I've ever asked you guys and I'm just curious because both of you were in your twenties with kids. Do you remember like wrestling with being young and still wanting to go out and do your own thing? Like, can you like vividly remember like that? Clearly. Or you can clearly. It was uh, the the loss of um, what feels like the loss of freedom. Um, not doing things like your buddies that are able to do. Feeling like oh, I can't do this thing. So I have this, you know, I have these kids I'm taking care of, and oh my god, my sleep is in, is impacted, and I have this stress and this you know burden of having to care for these other people. That was something I grappled a lot with. Really, a lot, and uh, and I, I mean, I think a lot of people do. As my frame has shifted and changed, um, you know what it reminds me of when somebody's trying to exercise regularly and eat right, and they are grappling with the, I can't just eat whatever I want. I can't just lay on the couch all day long. Mm. I can't just, <clears throat> now when you do it a long time, you realize that you're actually more free because you're healthy, not less free. So that mindset shift uh, was a profound one for me. And I feel very blessed that I have a gap between my my kids, I have two older kids and, and they're teens and then two that are, you know, three and under. And, um, because I had that time in between, I can reflect. Do you feel more. like it was a, um, light switch moment or do you think it was like over time you started to piece that together? It feels like slow growth and then sudden growth. Mm. You know what I mean? Like little by little by little by little. And then boom, there was a big shift in kind of the way I looked at things. Because obviously, sure. I see that you do getting your second round of young kids. Yeah. Like I've only, I only really know you that way because I don't, I didn't watch your younger one or your older ones at this at this stage, yeah. and so for, I don't see that other side. But you do recall that transition and remember that. What about you, Justin? Did you? So what was the original <laughs> question? Are you not here? You <laughs> fucking check out them. <laughs> No, I didn't I, it was, check out when uh, I talk over there. No, <laughs> I didn't check out. I just it was like really concentrated on what I was trying to. Talk so when about. you were in your twenties, when you were in your when you were in twenty, you guys, because you guys both had kids at a young age yeah. like that, and um, you know something that I always thought about when I chose not to have kids is like I knew I was fucking selfish. Like I yeah. was very aware of how selfish of a person I was, and I knew that that probably wasn't a responsible time for me to bring a child into this world. Now you guys did, and so do you remember? wrestling with that selfishness of like wanting to be with the boys or wanting to go buy yourself a new toy yeah. that you, but instead having to sacrifice to raise these kids. Like, do you, do you recall those moments? Yeah. Well, uh, I think when I was married, it was more, I was wrestling more like in terms of like the beginning, the very first year, because it was like, okay, so I'm married now. And like the, and they still wanted to go out and party and do all these things. Like we were kind of doing a single people. And it was like, well, I made this commitment, and so I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. I had a hard time kind of um, dealing with that person. Like, I was I was transitioning more into, like, I want to be a little bit more responsible, and, like, I'm committed now, and I'm, like, kind of trying to just focus on that, and, and it just became less appealing to me. And so mm -hmm. it was just more one of those things where it just started to slowly just feel different, and, and, it, and it wasn't like I was trying to separate myself intentionally. Uh, it just felt like that just didn't resonate with me anymore. And then, you know, it, it was kind of a quick thing because we had, uh, we got pregnant like within a, a year of being married. And then it was like, okay, well now I'm like really 
going to have to focus on this. And I was kind of explaining that. And I was still trying to make it work with the, I think the struggle was like trying to make opportunities with my friends feel like, make them feel comfortable that I wasn't like, you know, some moral uh, superior, like what I was doing was like what they had to do or anything. Well, I can only imagine how hard, because I remember being the, the friend who didn't have that, right? And we, there's a couple of us that didn't have kids and there was a couple that did. And boy, I remember the shit in our 20s that you gave the guy that was yeah. married with the kid or just yes. like- you really I had friends like that. Yeah, yeah was, you really rag on on that guy for for you know breaking up the group. Like yeah. you're not you know we're not we're not meeting up poker every Thursday for poker happening. nights and we're not going out on Saturdays like we used to. And so oh, because you have a kid now, you said things weren't going to change. Yeah. Like, so you you did remember wrestling with that. Oh, and, yeah. And for the same thing, like I asked Sal, like was it like a light switch moment or has it been like over time? And then, cause now again, I really know you guys as these super present fathers who don't struggle with that at all would choose to do stuff with your kids over going out with anybody ever. Yeah. So it's, it's, well, I think the light switch part was when Courtney was working graveyard and then, um, I was still, because I was like kind of home by myself, like I would have them come over to my house and then we would kind of do our thing and like try to, uh, play video games or, you know, do whatever, like dude stuff. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, I have like a, you know, like an, an infant that I'm, I'm also like trying to kind of care for, uh, and until Courtney would come back. And then it was like sort of this weird exchange. And then once she stopped, uh, doing, um, the graveyard shift, I was just like, okay, pfft, like, I'm like, this is, this is where I'm at. You know, and I was like, I'm done with this whole, like, trying to pretend that I'm, mm. like, you know, the cool guy, like, still hanging with the single guys and all that. I was just like, whatever. I'm just about my family. Yeah. A lot of cultures have, um, uh, like, a coming of age uh, type of uh, event or ceremony for men. Th and that seems to be important to help men make that transition. Mm hmm um, which we kind of lost in, in modern societies. I think for young women, it's, it's very obvious, right? They go from, they don't have a period to having a period. That's very much like, oh my God, you know, now, you know, that's I'm an interesting thought, Sal. Like, well, that's, like you think that played into like Peter Pan syndrome and stuff like that because we don't have it in our they, culture. We don't every, almost every culture does. Right. Every, almost every old culture has this kind of coming of age and you're a man now and yeah. now you're, you know, you're no longer a boy and. You know, you're going to be a father or yeah, a husband. Responsibility time. Yeah, like even some cultures like, you know, there's I even think some. it's so important. We've lost like sight of that. Well, listen, you have to have a moral framework. You have to have this framework for, from which you, you, you drive your life. Otherwise, if it's just based off of you, you think you're so reasonable. I think we're so arrogant to think we're so reasonable. Human reason can be twisted so many different weird ways, obviously. Like look around. So you have to have this kind of framework and who's going to teach you as a young man, well, other men, other men. And exactly. if they're not teaching you this, where are you going to learn it from? The media? What's the media trying to teach you? Buy our stuff. Yeah. And who buys uh, more consumerism, stuff? Consumerism, yeah. Peter Pan buys more stuff. Yeah. Young dude who's just making money and thinks it's cool to drive fast cars and, you know, hook up with chicks and whatever. Well, that's a great consumer. Uh -huh. That's what we want. We don't want the dude that's like trying to be responsible, settle down. All of a sudden, what do you realize, right, as a, as a, as a father? Well, at first you're like, I got to bust my ass and work more. And then you realize like, Okay, we got to sell down. I got to spend more time with my family. I'm not going to spend friv frivolously. And this is what's more important in the bars. Like, who cares about that? Like, I'll do that once a month with my wife, maybe, and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you're a kid and you don't have that, <clears throat> like, no one's teaching you that, you're watching music videos, YouTube, social media, and it's teaching you what you think you're supposed to be or what's supposed to be fun. So, yeah, get, you know, getting married, having kids, settling down is boring compared to all that other stuff, or at least it seems that way. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. You can win that by doing this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on. MAPS Old Time Strength, half off. And MAPS Obstacle Course Racing, OCR, also 50% off. If you're interested, here's what you got to do. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of consumerism, you brought it up the other day and I, I didn't really notice it until after you said something. And now I feel like my feed is full of all these people that are complaining about Black Friday sales yeah. and oh, like yeah. the, the prices. So, and I, you know, I, I guess I just hadn't thought about it. I'm not a big shopper on Black Friday. And I saw like someone talking about how, and, and I do recall this though, like Best Buy, like, do you remember people used to camp out? Yeah. Yeah. Like the day before oh you God. get there. And back then you could get like, 
eighty percent off of a TV. Like it was just like crazy it was pandemonium. Like, yeah, people crazy, nuts, crazy yeah. sales. And they were a lot of these kids were like breaking down. Like it's like a lot of these things are like fifteen percent off, twenty yeah. percent. It's like a coupon deal. It's not yeah. like a real margins black are market. getting sh shrunk because of uh, inflation. So yeah. I think what's happening. So these companies are like, what do we do? Yeah. I know. Had to tighten up a lot this year, I guess. Yeah, so. dude. It's uh, it's interesting. There was a viral video I just showed you guys uh, earlier where this mom, she's like crying into the camera. She's like, I don't know why I'm recording this, but I'm a, I, I, we do everything right. My husband and I do everything right. I have a full-time job. I'm a registered nurse. My husband works full-time. We just got paid on Friday. We bought groceries, filled the cars with gas, paid off the mortgage. It's Tuesday. We have $200 left until next Friday. She's like, I don't know how we're going to make it. And it went viral. <laughs> because a lot of people, I think, are identifying with. Yeah, feel they can same. relate. Yeah. Well, I mean, the cost of groceries exploded. The cost of gas exploded. By the way, when they do the inflation, when they're showing what inflation does, they don't. Count yeah, they pull out the stuff, <laughs> the main stuff that people buy. I think that's so funny. How they what a it. what a what a shell. You know the game, the shell game, the famous <laughs> shell game where they switch the yeah. shells around to yeah. make yeah. That's what they're doing. They changed the definition of it. I remember that. Like, uh, oh, of recession. Yeah, I, know, dude. I was what, like, get out of here. What a joke! It's like, it's, and what's crazy is that it works for a little bit until people are so hit with reality. You know, they're like, I know it's everything's hard, honey, but you know, I watch the news and they said inflation's not that bad. You know, two months later, all right, it's bad. <laughs> I know what the news says, but I told you guys the, yeah. the car one's coming, right? I mean, that one was they did with the, the we did with the housing market back in 07. They did the same thing with the cars, just giving them out to everybody, and then also with the chips, it that drove all the demand yeah. up. So there's vehicles that are that are losing 30, 40 percent now that were selling just last year for 30, 40 percent more than what they were. I saw that Tesla had did that. They they cut they cut their prices by like 30 something percent, which drove the whole EV market down because everybody had to follow suit because of them. Do you know, have you seen the charts hmm. of how the price of a Tesla over the over the years, how much has come down? No. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Uh -uh. It's yeah, it, and it, look at it right now. It's like it's falling off a cliff. It's just going down and he down. Is, like, wow. He is like like say what you want about the guy, but as an entrepreneur, uh he's the probably the great he's definitely the greatest entrepreneur of our time. One of the greatest of all time. Yeah. By some of the things that he's done. I mean, if you look at the the innovation that they've had to do just to create and produce Teslas, mm -hmm. it's remarkable. That all stuff that they had to create and do cuz it didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like you just took a car and and made it yeah, well, pretty wild. Speaking of innovation, I, I was going to, you know, shove this in here because somebody was asking me about, like, the new Beatles song. Like, there's literally a new Beatles song. And you're like, what? The Beatles, like, John Lennon's dead, you know. It was all, is this AI? No. So it's huh? not AI. They actually had. He came back. He came back. They had recordings. <laughs> he had recordings. Oh, like he did the oh. Michael Jackson thing where he had a whole. He had a whole, like, catalog. And, and so they picked this one song. Um, and, uh, they had to do a lot uh, because technology now they can kind of extract like, um, some of his vocals away now from, uh, the, the piano. Cause I guess they actually worked on this for like over a decade, uh, before that, but the technology wasn't really available yet to where they could like parse it out enough to where it sounded good. Cause you know, you have like, um, so you have the remaining members left like Ringo and Paul and so they, they actually played on uh, with their instruments and then sang back up and everything like and they recorded layered it. it, layered over it. Uh, and George Harrison, they they had to like sort of mimic what he would have played on guitar and like kind of like his lead to it. And so there's this little bit of a documentary. It's only like. I don't know, half an hour long or something on HBO, but it kind of goes. Is it good? It. It's good. It's like it's, it is good. It's you know, really cool, like to 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 peer into that process and and how they they had to really think their way through all of this to 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 come up with something that was viable. Do you know who showed me this? Hmm. My fourteen year old daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah because apparently, apparently, it's like flying with the kids her age. No way. Yeah. So I didn't you, know if anybody was aware of it because I wasn't aware there was like a new Beatles You know, I never song. thought of this until just right now. How interesting that's going to be now where you have, you're going to have this ability, right? With some of these big artists, they have like hundreds, sometimes thousands of songs that have never been released. They never- a bunch of audio. And, and how wild is that going to be if like, you know, 10, 20, 30 years go by and like that thing that they created 30 years ago was like- so ahead of its time that nobody latched onto it or thought it was great. Yeah. And then it becomes great later on. That'll be wild. You're going to see wild. that. You're going to have to see that. Yeah. Right. Because we wouldn't, you wouldn't have that, but back in the days, like, and I know that I, Michael Jackson, I know Tupac, that's a lot of like, that's where those rumors come from where they're not really dead uh, is that yeah. they have these catalogs that with tons 
of songs that were never released and they're 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 taking pieces out of it and they're being on the there's play. another really good documentary is about little richard and he's like one of my favorite all time uh and he's for sure the godfather of rock and roll and like he, it goes into like detail of why and like i i didn't realize like elvis covered like tutti frutti which is a terrible like cover and version and there's this other one of this other uh guy that was like uh, even more like square ned flanders you know version of it that uh, they both sold way more records than, than little richard I would have just never, because i would have never guessed you were a huge fan huge fan i yeah. had no idea oh dude that seems so opposite of the kind of music that no i started out with like rockabilly and like rock and roll but like he definitively created like the rock and roll sound you know it was like very much of like uh uh, like kind of like like Baptist singing mm -hmm. um, style, like very like um, uh, loud and, and and energetic, and then like um, he had this like really cool like a uh, boogie woogie kind of because my grandma played a lot of boogie woogie on the piano, uh, and I got into that as a kid, and and, um, and he added a little flair to it with like a percussive flair with his right arm, and so they created his own kind of style with it, which then they kind of built oh, off of. But it's like. They, they go into a lot of detail of how like Prince, like all, all these people, like the Beatles, he actually went on tour with the Beatles and, and they, he taught them kind of like, you know, some of his tracks and then they played it live and then it became, that's where they got the screaming pandemonium fans that were just like, ah, to the Beatles. Same thing with Elvis. It's, it, it literally was like, he's, a, he was the very first one to get that kind of response from an audience they just went like does that now, how does that ha by the way does that happen anymore uh, you, you ever watch old 50s no. and 60s videos of like the girls in the audience the artist goes up there and perform and they pass out or lose their oh, they, minds they, they still got yeah, yeah, yeah they I mean, do that though? oh yeah oh yeah they're still Where they cry and yeah, like, freak yeah, out still, and everybody they're still does I don't it do that, that still i don't think that ever dies i think there's people that like idolize these these idols like right? i mean these like yeah but i haven't that, seen a video a recent video of an of a uh, a concert where the whole front, like the whole front section, people are crying, freaking out. Bro, we out. have what's her face right now, who's like breaking Taylor records. Swift. Taylor yeah, Swift. but are they doing but, that? Are they yeah. Oh my God, are they really? Doing that? Yeah. yeah. Andrew, pull up some crazy shit. There's like, I mean, there's people do some crazy just stuff. Crazy there's shit. what yeah. those guys from like uh, England, like uh, uh, I forget, like uh, anyway, the, the One Direction guy or uh, what? <laughs> uh, I watched. I just watched that. Documentary. You know what I mean? Like some of those guys, like you know the pop singers. You know what that's, they still that, get that. That's sometimes. evidence of uh, mob mentality, social contagion. Yeah, is where you get a bunch of people who amplify their emotions so much that it overrides their body. What does it I say? It was a out. sexual repression thing though, too. Well, that's for, you know, what is like, it, what does it say then. about us though? If you're the type of person that doesn't like that, I don't fall into that. Right. Like I don't, yeah. like I can really enjoy like music and I could be a, a, a like I could be really into this band. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And I'm go, I've seen them like Lincoln park. I saw three times tool. I've seen three times. So I could, I, I really you like don't scream and pass out. Yeah. But I don't get, <laughs> you don't throw your panties. Up no, there no. Uh, is it, I mean, what does that say? What does it say about, well, we all have that in common. So all of us are like that. Well, if we like something, <laughs> if we like something, and then we see everybody else, we like have it, to be cool about. We immediately it. are like, yeah, dude, I don't like this anymore. That's I mean, so. Weird I like it, but I don't like it that much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, you guys scream. I'm yeah. not going to scream. Although Justin does mosh pit stuff. Which I is, do. I actually that, that's like the guy version of. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the that's the version. I guess I, I get like I can't help myself. Like, I mean, the closest just, thing ah! that I've ever felt to something like <laughs> that is I can get sucked yeah. into a game like that. Right? I can get sucked into a competitive game like. Let's that. see this video. I want to see people lose their mind over Taylor Swift. I know. I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, to bro, your point, people, like I haven't seen people mind. cry and like pass out. Like, what I mean, Michael that? Jackson obviously was a big, you know, he had yeah, a but big he's talking about recent, right? Like, and yeah. I think there's still people that go nuts over because there's all those classic videos. Is, is Let's see. Are they? Look at she's crying. Is that a? Yeah, but it's yeah. not the same. Why? Because she's. I want to see this dude pass out. She oh, just passed out. There you go. Hold on a second. There you go. Hold on a second. Wait, was that a girl? Pull up. Pull up Beatles fans. No, wait, you can't. It's totally different. It's like literally like hundreds of them. Yeah. L like literally like they saw, I don't know what they saw, but they, they lose their mind completely. Is that not enough different? to win that argument or no? Is that, that I mean, it still happens. I yeah. think though the Beatles were crazy as far as the response from Insane. the female yeah. fans yeah. in particular. I mean, you get, you're probably right. So I was so. reading the articles and they were saying that it's uh, the screaming and everything is really probably designed to get attention from the artists. Mm -hmm. And then the screaming becomes contagious. Yes, social contagious. Yeah, so uh, okay. those two things combined. Yeah.
Wow. So yeah, see. and I think that would always kind of exist then, right? I mean, you're always going to have someone who's famous that everybody's into. Everybody that's in the front by, row. By like the, if you're in the front row of a concert, like you are like. By the way, I'm going to make, I'm going to piss off people. This is just true, right? So. Oh uh, boy, don't say anything about Taylor Swift, bro. You'll fucking take our podcast. No, 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 no. Not <laughs> me. Taylor Swift is I don't terrible want artist. These yeah. uh, no, no, my no. pub. You said it. You <laughs> said it. Not that's not what I'm going to say. No, here's what I'm going to say. Um, women uh, are innately more. Um, sensitive and intelligent when it comes to social cues, right? So that was so great. I like how you added the intelligent. Like, no, no, hold on, hold on. I like how he just danced around Listen, that. No, no, I didn't dance around anything. Listen, Listen. That was good. That's clever. Every was strength comes with a weakness. Crafty. Okay, just like men are innately uh, more likely to use aggression when it comes to accomplishing goals or defending people or whatever, right? But there's also a dark side to that. So yeah. women are more likely, they're just more intelligent with social cues. They are. They can read things better. This is why they can see things differently. This is why girls will see things. I don't think anybody's going to argue women are more social than men. Yes. And guys are going to be like, we're like, like what? Yeah, what yeah. happened? I didn't feel that. She's yeah. like, you didn't see how the way that she breathed or looked at me? And you're like, no. And she's probably right. <laughs> you're probably just clueless. <laughs> well, it also makes them more susceptible to social contagions. Sure. Uh, so the, you yeah, don't typically right. see men, you know, doing that kind of. Now, where you see sometimes this happen is with aggression. So when you see riots. Uh-huh. That's when you see guys get that social contagion where it's yeah. like, oh, you broke something. Or like, I want to break Or like Woodstock. sports because sports yeah. is like Correct. mimics Limp war Biscuit. and battle, Correct. right? So you Isn't get that, that funny? Mm -hmm. That's Isn't why that I, I was making the point. I was like, that's about the only thing that I can somewhat connect to like that feeling of like probably like if I look at look at me, I probably I look love, a little ridiculous. I would love to see a, a fanatical sport fan debate a fanatical like concert goer female about yeah. like, well, that's stupid. You guys are screaming. She's like, well, you guys yeah. paint your faces and take your shirts off. Like, that's different. <laughs> oh yeah, that's different, man. Yeah, that's you bigger. don't wear Slipknot masks. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. come on, dude. <laughs> I know. Anyway, speaking of craziness, I got to bring this up because we have to keep calling this out. I'm gonna pull up the article. Because uh, this needs to stop, and we need to be very careful with the direction of, of where this is going. So the UN set is set to call on Americans to radically reduce meat consumption. Okay? So, and the reason is for the climate, right? So we need to eat way less meat because it's driving emissions, and we need to save We're going to respectfully decline. Yeah. So, so here, this is a big, this is a, here's the issue here with this. There's a debate as to whether or not. This will actually make a difference. There's better ways to, to, to you know, consume and grow meat and whatever, but that's not the argument I'm going to make. Here's the argument I'm, I'm going to make. When the climate becomes your God, the most important thing, everything else bends itself to that. So what ends up happening is screw your health, screw nutrient deficiencies, screw the fact that if the average person stopped eating meat, they would probably suffer from things like nutrient deficiencies, more obesity, consume more processed foods. They wouldn't innovate as much. We would see all these other problems. Forget that because the climate is the most important thing. That's the God. Yeah. And that's what's happening because- Well, where's the humans fall in that? That's yes. very low on the totem pole. So they, They're not measuring values and the climate's important, but so is our health. And we know this. If you took the average person and you just had them not eat meat, they would 100% be less healthy. It's one of the only whole foods that they find. That If you take the average person who consumes- 70% of the diet is heavily processed food. Look, look at the 30% that's whole foods. What is it? Meat, milk, eggs. Yeah. Okay, cut those out. Now what's it, now what are we left yeah, with? 100% yeah. processed food consumption, worse health, not a good trade. This I just is, hope this is what I think people need to understand. There's two different people. There's one that wants healthier people for a healthier world, or there's one that wants less people. Yes. And there's there's no, like, it, so that's the definitive line right there for me. Yeah. So yeah. I, I wonder if it's that or it's more just like, – Money driven because it's you can't of patent state. That's I think it's more that's about part of it. Yeah, I think that's most of it. I think it's really like if we can shift them over into this fake meat processed all this process of patented stuff. That's right. We could patent it all, and then we can we can monopolize all these, yeah, these food companies where we speaking, can't with right. beef. Yes, yeah. and I'm speaking to the average person who buys into it because the climate has become their right, right, right. So now they're like, yes, at all costs, save yeah, the planet, including the yeah, kill angle everybody. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's the thing I want to say. And that's the argument I think we need to talk about uh, to people because it is not a worthy trade. I'm going to tell you right now, I've worked with enough people to know what happens to the average person when they try to go vegan and they're doing it for reasons other than they they sincerely believe in not hurting animals. Oh. You you end up with, first off the di the diet the fail rate is like any other diet. Number two, their health almost always. Well, gets the worse. discipline that that, that yeah. person has to to in order to get the nutrients they need to like I mean people just are not 
discipline like that to go after the foods that their body needs. And if you cut out the major food groups that provide a lot of that nutrients, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It seems obvious yeah. to me because what, what we do, and we see that with people. I mean, I see people that have those food groups and they're still struggling to get all their nutrients. Now you want to take out two or three of the most nutrient dense things that they, they consume and then think they're going to like all of a sudden become more disciplined and go find yeah, that through no. vegetables. Like, I just don't, I don't see that happening. No, you know? it's not going to happen. Well, anyway, I saw a funny video yesterday. You guys know what escape rooms are? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever done those, by the mm -hmm. way? We all did them together. Yeah. Did we, do we literally did that as like a field trip with oh, the we company. Did. A long yeah. time I ago. I didn't make it to that one, but you guys did. We oh, you did. didn't make it? Yeah, that's right. You weren't there. there. That was where, fun. Where that was, was that? fun. Yeah, that was cool. They're a blast. I want to take my Did kids. you guys get trapped? <laughs> we didn't, yeah, we, we didn't, didn't succeed. Because I wasn't there, right? Yeah, there was like one was, step there. We just couldn't You guys let Sal lead the way? Is that what happened? We're the only one that's been incarcerated and escaped, so you know- there was, the there was definitely it's, a timer thing that, uh, yeah, we, yeah. we, we did good. Short. We did, but there was like a sticky, I don't remember what it was, but anyway, is there such a thing as you can be good and still not get out? There's the, there's like a, you get close. They, to some of them out. are hard. Some of them are really hard yeah. and, and you'll get stuck on one clue and then that clue leads to the others. And if you get stuck on it, you're, you're screwed. Yeah. But anyway, there's this guy who has been filmed on security cameras going to escape rooms locking the employees in the escape room and then sliding <laughs> clues under the door that was <laughs> no way yeah. really yeah that's kind of funny i saw a video of that's it. kind of funny he locked yeah. this girl in and she's like trying to open it and he gives her this paper with clues and she looks at it and she's like oh what? <laughs> i gotta try and get out well, how, how bad do you feel too like that's it's like you inception. work for a company like that and you can't get out you're like fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i just work here man yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like a good that's a good prank right there that's a hilarious i prank. like that but he's like probably that. gonna go to jail so you can't, you can't lock people <laughs> yeah, in buildings. Yeah, you can't do that, huh? Dude, you're you know what's, you're see, look, look, there it is. See. Look at this. Staff locked in escape room by uh, by fleeing prank, prankster. Yeah, see, look. He locks it. She can't get in. Like, he, slips, he slips that. Yeah. She's like, what's this? Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Come on, man. That looks staged, no? No, it was. Yeah, her reaction is a little. Yeah, that looks a little, little dramatic, but maybe she's just dramatic. Yeah. You know what? That's not a bad, actually, that's not a bad observation, Adam. What if, does it advertising this escape room place? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah wouldn't that be brilliant? Yeah, that would that be looks like bad acting, dude. Yeah, it does look like bad acting, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, man, did I get fooled? You might have got fooled, yeah. bro. I might have got bad. You should know better by now not to share these, stuff on the show. Anything until goes gone. viral is staged. Yes, I feel, the same, I feel the same way, too. Everything? Everything. <laughs> All right. Dude, go through it. All right. Maybe again with fresh eyes. Look into it. Andrew can look for us. man. Everybody look into it. It's all yeah. stage. The world is a stage. Yeah. Anyway. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something funny. So Max is going through this. Uh, so we are now entering where he repeats a lot of stuff and now he picks up other people's things. So always like throws Katrina off like what? Oh, wow. I don't say that. You don't say that where you get that. So he, uh, we got for Halloween and Christmas, we have like those, um, you know, plug in blow up decorations and he likes them in the house, which they're not made for the house, right? So it's, <laughs> it's been a, yeah. a big yeah, snowman. Bro, we have, exactly. We have snowman and like reindeer and <laughs> shit. Oh, blow, yeah, yeah, blow, yeah. Blow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't want that as a kid? I know. Amazing. And so, you know, and we let him do it for a while, right? Until like it was time to actually set the decorations up outside, which I did this last weekend. And so I set him up. He comes home from school and he comes outside and he just sees like pissed. You know what I'm saying? And he looks at me and goes, I told you a thousand times, <laughs> these go in the house. <laughs> a thousand times? Yeah, I'm like, who the fuck says that? I don't say that. Where'd you get that from? Tell me a thousand a times. A thousand? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's ridiculous. Yeah, did you check them? Yeah, you did not tell me They're a thousand all times. Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. Do you know how many a thousand is? Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, you say funny Have you shit. had a situation like that where you've done a threat and then you had to be like, damn it, now I got to carry this threat out? Have you no, that? I'm pretty good about that, right? Like, I know that I know you don't ever want to get get caught up like that of like threatening and then not being willing to what's cool is he's still and you know i'm knock on wood right as long as this will last don't worry you got the teenage years coming i know oh, right so that's point. why i don't i know better than to say that it'll be forever like this but i i still got him in that phase where i mean we're four now right mm -hmm. like i he he doesn't hear dad's tone change like get like upset that if i just slightly maximus yeah that's it that's it wow. i mean that's like borderline will make him cry see if i dad, do that dad dad if i do that do to that. aurelius he interprets yeah, it as to, you need yes. to be punctual that's why I, i'm like yeah. I, I am real careful about how much i use that yeah. it's like i only want to use that yeah no see if aurelius hears yeah, that ninja level, he, he interprets it as do more of the thing <laughs> that's crazy i'm not supposed to do what, what did he do the other day oh he he likes to flush the toilet so he has to if you go to the bathroom <laughs> 
if you flush the toilet before he can go flush it, it's like, forget it, right? So you got to leave, you got to whatever. Max is the same way. So he's got to flush the toilet for you. Well, anyway, his hands were sticky. I don't know what he was doing. And he runs. I'm going to flush the toilet. No, he starts walking. Sorry, he starts walking. I'm going to flush the toilet. toilet. And his mom's like, no, wash your hands first. So he just speeds up because he's going to get there before (laughs) (laughs) before we can get him Uh, so he can flush the toilet. uh, Yeah, that's that's a good time. Dude, you know, uh, speaking of kids. Yeah. I, I'm watching um, media with a more careful eye these days, and I'm noticing a lot of things that are injected into shows for kids mm. that probably shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. I just didn't notice them before. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching uh, The Grinch, the, the live-action version. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I'm watching that. And there's a scene where The Grinch, or one of the characters gets his head stuck in, in this woman's cleavage. And oh, it's like, oh, no. you know? And I'm like, why? Oh, wait no. a minute. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what are they? Wait a minute. Oh, they've been doing that for a while. That's like, uh, I mean, actually, I think it's a brilliant strategy from a business perspective. Not the best for raising a kid. But I mean, it, what it does is it attracts the adults. Mm. They do these jokes that are like above their, the, the average kid that's watching well, that. Shrek really leaned into that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Shrek is, did it. There's a lot of, there's adult humor. Yeah, there's a way hum- to do it that's There's adult like that, humor that's hidden into yeah, the, the, kid, the kid. Well, yeah, driven. I guess, you know, shaking it in your, I don't remember that part. Yeah. I just watched it yesterday. Well, we so were watching and it ha- Jessica watched it and she's like, what? We're not watching this anymore. I'm like, that's weird. I never noticed that before. But you start to see in all these, these cartoons and. Yeah. Live action things like things well, like that. Pinocchio that is creepy as hell. I Pin- mean, yeah. uh, what happened in the Pinocchio? Well, you know, Pino- with the island and then you know, oh, that's all more. The boys. Just go back and watch. I it. did. So, yeah, it's it's, it's actually gross. Kind of scary. Yeah, it's almost like oh, interesting. Yeah, like it's it's very <laughs> parallel. To it's like, tough once you hear too like the bias of what like yeah. the worth, and then now you see every you interpret everything as like oh that means this. I know. Yeah. yeah. So well, Pinocchio is weird. They've done some. They've done some. That's like, different though. I mean that there. I mean that the speculation around that or the conspiracy around that is like people that worked there intentionally did some weird shit or yeah. whatever like that to it's put like it in Epstein's Island. But I think stuff. like well, Shrek, exactly. Shrek and Grinch, and like I mean they're just mindful. Now all of them. I mean, uh, what's the minions? Like mm. they all, they put like <laughs> this is minions. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, 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 right. They, didn't they kind of move like that. No, no, no they like, don't. You know, <laughs> I watch this that all weird time. French <laughs> accent. You but know, they're yeah. like uh, they're. It's smart because. I, I mean, and I know this now being a dad with a kid that wants to watch them over. Like, I like I like the ones that I'm going to chuckle a little bit. And yeah. like, if you're going to sit and have to watch a cartoon for an hour yeah, and a half, yeah. hopefully you'll have Storks. some. That movie is amazing. Yeah, yeah they do. That, they that do. is so, that's not, that's, uh, what is that? Dream, dream work? Is I that dream think work? so. Yeah. It's uh, it, the guy that uh, was on Saturday Night Live that did the the dick in the box. The oh, that's sketch. Nice. Yeah. What's that little, the, wow, the, the yeah. little bird that's on uh, Storks that's like, uh, Oh, yeah. oh, you like me now? Oh my God, yeah. bro! Have you seen Storks? I have, but I haven't watched it in a long time. Oh, it's we're so on. Fun. You guys are it's not. It's the funniest. Have you guys? Do you guys start Christmas movies yet? Yep. Yeah, so, we did. We watched Home Alone. Uh, Home Alone. We did uh, Christmas Vacation, which is my favorite, and then um, we did Home Alone. Yeah. So what's ne- your guys' next is Elf? What's your guys' favorite? Elf. What's your favorite 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 Christmas? Ooh, Elf movie? would be up there. Christmas Vacation, hands down. Really, Matt, Matt Lampoon? Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. That, that, that is. A is good that the one, one where the you serious right now, Clark? Where the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, where the family <laughs> visits? Like, I did. Yeah, there's just so many lines in there. Yeah, can, my, that, that is classic. And actually, yeah, that wasn't even on my list right now. And I need to make sure. That now, is, uh, now, can we do any fam any Christmas movie, or are we sticking with family here in the category? Why is there? Oh, I mean, Die Hard. Die Hard. Everybody puts Die Hard. Die Hard's great. It's like the you know that's like the biggest like debated thing ever is Die Hard. Is it technically a Christmas movie or not? And it's like, no, it's not. Just because they have a Christmas party inside that movie does not make it a Christmas movie. That's a movie. great one, dude. Yeah. But it is it is actually in like the most famous like top 10 Christmas movies yeah. list. Die Hard is always in there as like one of them. The the A Christmas Story is always one of my favorites. Really? Yeah. I love that. That. You know the yeah, scene where he drops, he drops, the, his dad's having him hold the, the lug nuts and he drops them. Oh, yeah. Does every boy have this experience with their dad where you holding the flashlight? Yeah, God forbid. I think just our generation. There's a famous You meme? drop something or miss the flashlight, like the point. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's famous memes of that. Yeah. Oh. Go around. Every you dad is, or every kid is yelled, like, yelled, yelled My dad would make me hold like a flashlight for him or something. You know, hold this thing up for me. And your arm is getting tired. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. The fear. <laughs> If I moved wrong, bro. <laughs> yes. You know, because they're doing something uh, intricate, you know, if you mess them up. Uh-huh. Doug, do you have a you have a favorite Christmas movie? Like black and white, maybe? Like Probably, a, yeah. Doug, Mir- Doug, yeah, on, white Christmas. Miracle, Miracle on 31st Doug Street or there. something like that. What's that one? He, he was yeah. there when Christmas, a wonderful was, life. Yeah. When Christmas yeah. was invented. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was, that, that came out when I was young. He was one of the wise men. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I do have a favorite. I mean, I always like the... Uh, 
boy, they, like the Grinch stories and things like that. The yeah. cartoon one, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I was a kid. You know when that one came out? 1966. Yeah. Oh, the original. The original one. Wow. 1966. Really? Yeah, I just looked it up because my son wanted to watch the live action one. We're like, no, we're not watching that anymore. Mm. And I went to the original one. I like <laughs> Which the, is probably the new good. animated one's pretty good. The, the new, yeah, 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 that's, that's, like that's that actually one. Max's favorite. Yeah. The new animated one. That's he, not bad. Yeah, yeah. He, like, he likes that one a yeah, lot. So, Dude, uh, speaking of animation, I'm going to throw this one in go here. Go for it. Smash all my content good. in I was trying today. to set you up for it. It yeah. was like a 15 uh, minute delay. Yeah. yeah, so last time I talked about like the South Park episode and, and that we all watched, and it was like yeah. this commentary on you know, what's going on now. So do you know what their plan is now? They're going to do a follow-up to that. And I looked all into this just because I was That like, South curious. Park episode? Yeah. That, uh, that episode that they did. Uh -huh. uh, so because of like the Kathleen Kennedy, the Bob Iger, like this, the, yeah. all the hits on Disney with this, uh, they have been getting all these threats, even releasing it, they're getting all these threats and, and like lawsuits. And then if they put it on this channel, like they're going to sue and like they're going to take all their advertising off YouTube and blah, blah, blah. So they've been all these court battles and all this. So they're actually going to go like fourth wall in their next episode and they're going to place themselves in the episode against Kathleen Kennedy, mm. Bob Iger, like all the drama that's going on, like in real life, they're going to put within that's so South good. Park and then also have South Park characters. I was like, so brilliant. It is. Like, how you, much you, are you they can't worth? mess with them, dude. A lot. You have any idea no. how much they're worth? I, I'm so curious to those guys. Cause I mean, that's everything they do, right? They don't do any, do they branch outside of South park? Didn't they have that restaurant? Well, yeah. They, I mean, they did remember like those musicals and all those things that they had. No, like, I don't know. Mormon musical. I don't know what amazing. else they've done. Dude, they, they've done so many things, but like, uh Oh, team America. Oh, oh they did that? that? Yeah, bro, are you kidding me? Oh, that's like wow. one of my favorite all time oh, like, wow, that's, ridiculous yeah, that's movies. Really... Wow. So they Matt Stone and Trey Parker built a billion dollar empire. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, these these wow. like Casa Bonita. These yeah. wow. these these companies are hilarious. You've seen all the all the uh the organiz the organized efforts to remove advertising from X because of Elon? Yeah, yeah. How and he's suing Media Matters hardcore. Did you guys see this? Elon Musk's SX is suing Media Matters for defamation over an investigative report. The article claimed that Nazi content posted on X appeared alongside ads for major companies. How, how, how can you sue? I mean, you for can... slander, for putting out like false information. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, huh. it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Wow. But yeah, they're all like, we're not going to advertise on X anymore because of, you know, whatever. You're, they, they, they will try anything. That he used to be the the the, the darling the, of them, right? Because it's, he was pro electric car and stuff like that. Just goes to show, yeah. When you talk, you know, a staying bit on against... the, the 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 Disney topic, are you guys? Uh, I mean, we're, I kind of know where Justin is at because he's been more vocal about it. But are you more optimistic with that company, or are you guys like are the attitude of like fuck them? They're gonna they're gonna they're the way they're going, the direction they're going. You're you're in support of watching them cont completely die off or whatever. I, I want them to. I hope they change gears. I, I, that's what I hope, and I think yeah. they will. They're a power, they're a very um, iconic, influential company. They just made a lot of mistakes. Is they, they've they've tanked a lot of movies got, this year. Yeah, I think they just lean too much into the social, like uh, political sphere. Like they should have just kept in with what everybody loves is like just genuine stories that people yeah. can all you know uh, fall into and feel nostalgic about. And I don't know, like, I guess they've been meddling too much, which has been my concern. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the response has reflected that. So hopefully it, it kind of shifts their focus yeah. a bit. Uh, that's I'm hopeful. Like even so with the star Wars franchise, I was like, Oh my God, like uh, this is, they're just killing my you know favorite, uh, story of all time, but they're coming back and, and, um, uh, Dave Filoni now is like the head of the content uh, for Star Wars, which I was like really happy about. He he wrote a lot of the best like current stuff uh, in that, like with Ahsoka and with oh, Mandalorian. And isn't and, their goal to like drip it now? They're they're going to pull back on how yeah, much they're, they're holding. They actually like cut production on a lot of uh, of these other um, uh, different like uh, spot like different movies and, and, and things within that universe. They just like, we're like, we're just like going to kind of, didn't you say they're going to make a big shift? With, with yeah. The, I mean, that, the reason why I brought it up because, well, first you, you started talking about them, but I mean, 
I'm optimistic about uh, like Disney. I mean, I hope I definitely am because I've, I've banked on it. I've, I have more shares in Disney than I have in any other, any other company stock wise. And I think that it is an iconic company. I think that like example we saw with Bud Light, I think mm -hmm. that they've made some poor choices and they dabbled in some things thinking it was a better idea. I think they're learning their lesson. And I know that they, they, they got 60 billion going in the direction of theme parks this, this coming year or the 60 next billion. Theme. Yeah, so wow. I know that's their big shift and their pivot is, I mean, and, and they've made a lot of, I know, their content with the Star Wars and Marvel stuff, but I think a, a big part of pulling back on the production that way is to reinvest in the mm. experience. And I think this is brilliant because- That was the original moneymaker, wasn't it? The parks. And we, we talked about this not that long ago on the show where, you know, I do think that we're becoming more and more aware- of the addiction to the iPhone and iPads and how, you know, even though we're connected online, it's not the same thing right. as being connected in person. And I do think we're going to see a movement back into kind of traditional stuff of getting outside and socializing with people. And I think it's pretty brilliant that, you know, they've got the kind of power and money to lead the way in something like that by creating all these like theme parks and experiences in person for people. And I think that that's going to hopefully revive the company from what they've been doing for the last couple of years. So. I think it's a smart bet. Yeah, I, think, I do too. I think it's a very smart bet because those parks are still super that, popular. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, although the cost of going to those parks. I haven't gone in a while. I, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to go. They're expensive. Yeah, dude. they are. Have you seen how much a ticket to <laughs> yeah, go to Disney? No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, basically, yeah. It's right in line with everything else that's know. expensive. <laughs> that's, you know what I'm that's, saying? That's true. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think they'll make a comeback. I do. I think it is a... I think it's an iconic company. I think that they, you know, you gotta, I think, I think sometimes like, and I'm guilty of this too, right? Like because of the way we get the news delivered to us, you can be a bit alarmist and be like, oh, I can't believe that. And it's like, fuck Disney. It's like, yeah. well, there's thousands of people that work for Disney and there's a handful of people that get to make some of these it's decisions. It's also been successful yeah. for decades. They're not, they can't be, they Should, can't possibly be that stupid. You know, they just hit a century. Okay. A hundred years. They're not so stupid to say, screw what the market says. We're going to keep losing money. Right, they have to. They're you, gonna you, shift. You can only do that for so long. They're a company. Until you implode. Yeah, they're. A company. Yeah, and you also got to think like that. That's a creation of 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 a guy a hundred years ago. I know. Yeah, and to to like say it's a terrible company because now a new generation of people come in who now get to have a, a, a to say in how things move or how they work. Yeah. It's kind of unfair to just like imagine. I mean, what what happens? Say we All pass this do down to our correct. kids and our kids' kids, yeah. and they're they're running this thing and. They do things that we would do differently. So mind pump's shitty. It's terrible. Yeah. It's a terrible company. Or did you know the the wrong kid make the wrong decision? Are you trying to say we're the Disney of podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bold statement, huh? Yeah. No, no. I, know. Uh, I said hey, imagine, so I didn't even know it. imagine it. Hey, I wanted to ask you, uh, Adam. I know yeah. you you had quit or dramatically reduced uh, your cannabis consumption, and you were finding value in Ned. Are you still yeah seeing that? Yeah, oh yeah, using that. Oh yeah, no. So I mean, what are you getting from the Ned? That's it's, it's not the same. Obviously, it's not the same as cannabis. But what are you getting from it that is helping? I'm getting the same the same as far as relaxation without the high, right? Okay. So that was the thing. Obviously, and what I've noticed, I told this, I think the the first time that we brought this up, is the the potency to me. Like you feel it. Yeah. Remember you guys your receptors are when we would it, talk yeah. about Ned. Um, I would talk about mellow mode because the magnesium thing for me has been a game changer, which that's a consistent uh, ritual. But the sleep Ned was like, yeah, you know, if I, I would take it and I felt it. Um, but I don't think I felt it the same way you guys would talk about it. Uh, yeah. I've been on a kick with the sleep. I yeah. You guys, that. I mean, yeah. I, I know Doug touts it all the time. I know you, all you've I've said a lot about it. I mean, eh, and that's probably because I'm probably the, the highest, you know, you know, cannabis user out of all of us. But since I quit, boy, I goes, it works. Yeah, now I get it. You know what I'm saying? And I, <clears throat> so I do notice because it's the same receptors. It's the mm -hmm. CB1 and CBT receptors that are mm -hmm. being affected by the cannabinoid, you know, the cannabinoids in Ned and the cannabinoids in, in cannabis. The difference is there's no THC in yeah. the, in the Ned. Mm -hmm. Or I got, I got excited for a second and I showed Adam because like, uh, I guess Snoop Dogg like did this whole thing where he like, quit. he quit. And of course this is like a, you know, uh, a publicity stunt just to like promote some product, but. I'm going smokeless. Solo stove fix fire. They took out the smoke. Clever. You know, went a few days and I was like, 
oh wow, I wonder if he is like really like serious about this, and because that would be like, you know, like if he actually like made a point of like trying to, you know, be healthier, like it would have made a massive impact, you know. And of course. Like, oh, okay. No, it was just what was, <laughs> what was it? A what was, stunt. What was a stunt? I knew it was. I knew it was something like that uh, too. So he was actually pitching some some. Um, I think it was, um, you, you know, those like outdoor fire pit things. Like, so it was some smokeless, like fire pit. It's so a smokeless. So oh he, my God. I was like, that's funny. That was a high idea for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got just really it. stoned. He's like, yeah. I got this perfect idea for you guys. Yeah. I'm going to tell people like, and quit. it made him a ton of money. This I'm is sure. how we're going to yeah. sell it. He's, he's actually brilliant with the way he markets. Stuff. I've always said, I don't know who it is that is his agent, but he's like one of those guys that's like got his hands in everything. I don't know who's making that Dude, decision. You want to yeah. know what's interesting about cannabinoids? I was just reading this. It just reminded me. I was just reading this article on how cannabinoids help with pain because you see oftentimes in studies that it does reduce pain and they try to point to the anti-inflammatory effects, but that doesn't quite, that doesn't quite explain it. That's not really like what, it's not acutely anti-inflammatory like uh, an NSAID is necessarily. It's more of a kind of like over time anti-inflammatory. So like what's going on? And so I was reading this article and it was really fascinating because the person writing it t cited data and said, it's almost impossible to separate physical from emotional pain. You, they're, they're, you can't. They're the same, and they're mm -hmm. so intricately connected oh, yeah. that um, that one affects the other, vice versa. So your experience is what makes the pain more painful, or less painful, or not feel it at all. And they think that cannabinoids—the reason why for many people alleviate pain—has less to do with any like physiological anti-inflammatory effect, and so more to mental? do with its effect on the and the emotional so you state. Disassociate from your not even disassociate, just no. happier. Just happier. You just feel with... more relaxed. You feel better, and it doesn't hurt as huh. much. So you so, kind of build a new association. You know, it's one of the ways to feel more pain: sleep deprived or stressed. Oh, wow. You ever notice how much more cold you feel, oh, or yeah. how more painful things are when you're just tired? It, how much more loud everything is, yes. and you're like, Ugh. or if you're in a bad mood versus a good mood. Mm -hmm. So they think that that may be one of the ways that it works is because it shifts your emotional state, which we know this. That that's why people are like, oh my now god, they, pain feels better. Are they mm -hmm. using that information to discredit it, or is it more just doesn't like, matter? I don't. You how is that discrediting anything? You feel less pain? Yeah, well, because cool. then what someone will try to do is be like, oh, see, there's no physiological change that's happening. It's not doing anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. By the way, we see we know this with antidepressants and right. zeolytics. Pain, Some people have yeah, back pain, can't explain it. They do MRIs. We don't know what's going on. Oh, you're on an antidepressant or you go to therapy, back pain's gone. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, yeah. what the yeah. hell? What the yeah, hell's going on? That. Yeah. yeah, really interesting. Speaking you, of sponsors, I wanted to ask, uh I don't think you've used this yet, Justin, but you have you've used the the sunscreen from Caldera. Yes. What do you think of it? I so mean, it's mineral based. It's mineral based. Uh, I put it on just the other day, and the thing I don't like about mineral based ones it leaves a white, <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> white, <laughs> you know, haze. You look like zinc. Right. Don't we have? Don't I we have, have a, a video. We have a video yes, of me with sunscreen all over my face. It was the uh, one we. This is the Doug. This is the boat one. This is the boat Doug. one. Yeah. Anytime we go anywhere where there's there is going to be the sun out for longer than twenty minutes, he covers up. And I think it, is it Porky's where the guys have the. Oh uh, yeah, what's it on there? All the lifeguards in the eighties. Yeah, the old, yeah, like, cool. that's what it reminds me. And and Doug like gets it all over his face, so it's it's impossible. Like every whenever I see him, when we're getting ready to go somewhere, he's like, "Do you, you remember white those stuff neon colored face. ones? Like that was like a thing." For yes, me. yeah. Yes. Put your but I noticed so, but this you, one doesn't leave. Yeah, it. I saw you yeah. put it on. It didn't do it, huh? It didn't leave a haze, so that's great. Now it's not nanoparticulars, which is good because what they used to do, what some companies did, to get rid of that, is they broke down the zinc or titanium or whatever mineral they used. Um, they try to break to, it down so small level. where it's, it's, it's called nanoparticulized. So it doesn't leave the white, but the problem with that is it would absorb. Mm. So people would put zinc oxide on or some of the other minerals, and then they would get these like unsafe levels in their blood. So this is not that. Hmm. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay. Explain that to me. So it's safer and it's as So effective. it's not nano and yet it doesn't leave a white sheen. So I don't know how they did it, but they did it. So you put it on, you don't have this white. So it doesn't look like you're just caked. With, with Correct. Yeah, yes. no, I noticed that when you put it on, but then it's as effective or better for you because it's not getting. It's not seen. nano. You don't want you don't want to put minerals all over your body when they're broken down so small that you absorb large quantities because it go in your bloodstream. Yeah, your body doesn't yeah. get rid of minerals like it does uh, water soluble vitamins. So you can build unsafe levels of you know of some of these minerals. Well, I'll give it a try, and you know, I'm, I'm sure like I'm going to have to be the real like. 
case study here <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> with my lobster. I'm still uh, so amazed by that partnership. I, just yesterday, my my cousin messaged me. It's it, it's and we've talked about this before, right? The 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 com commercial ads of us have I've given just as almost as much attention, if not more, than the damn show is. Sometimes where like my cousin's like, "Oh my god, I was buying this face cream for my husband and." Oh, you came up as on the ad. I can't believe this. And then they start asking me all kinds of questions about it. I was like, yeah, no. By, by the way, a lot of people don't know the difference between I'm just the handsome face that you between mineral-based um, sunscreens and chemical-based sunscreens. Beside the fact, this is true, the chemical-based sunscreens, those chemicals have xenoestrogenic effects in the body. They can alter your hormones and, if, and they can affect weekly yet, but they still do affect the receptors that many hormones uh, will will impact, which is why they're like, Ugh, don't put this on kids. Don't use too many of these now, people are, are saying. But, uh, but, but the way that they work is they absorb the UV rays. Whereas the mineral-based ones, which are, don't do that, they don't affect your hormones. They don't, and again, unless it's nano particulars not getting absorbed in your skin, they reflect UV rays. So in my experience, a 30 SPF mineral-based one versus a 30 SPF chemical-based one, the, the mineral-based one's way more effective. Interesting. You don't have to apply it as much. You don't seem to get a sunburn because it's reflecting versus absorbing. So I don't know how they measure SPF, but in, in again, in my experience, I have, I'm not fair complected, but my, my kids are much more fair than I am. <clears throat> and I use the mineral ones and- Back in the day, before so I knew any I, better, I'd use the chemical. I always heard that SPF doesn't matter. I heard that once you get like or to fifteen, I think, or does it make a difference? Yeah, that the I've the, heard that. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely. Like, I mean, you're 15, more of an authority on this than I am for sure. So. Yeah, so like and SPF paid, forty million. Peter Piper. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I got to go fifty in this. You know, close to the equator. Yeah, it, it, it really depends. But yeah, like I. <laughs> Yeah, it, like 30, like I have to like stick around that or th yeah. between 30 and 50. 15 I can do if it's just like, you know. So I think here. if I recall, what I remember reading was that the difference between none to 30, there is a difference. But once you get beyond 30, there's no difference is what There's I a number that we, there's the, some that they talk about. I've heard this as well. Okay. Yeah. How true it is. Okay. I don't, I either do I. You can fact I check me. I, just, I don't know if that's that, happened to me. That, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you just, I mean, you kind of confirmed that right now because you said 30, you need 30 at least. Yeah. Uh -huh. like, so the question really would be, is it's there, probably do you notice 30, 30 and 50 good. if yeah. you notice a, a difference or not in mm. it? So it, it. Oh, interesting. Let's hear it. SPF 30 blocks nearly 97% of UB. UVB radiation, SPF 50 blocks out 98%. Oh, big deal. Oh, there yeah. Okay, there it so, is. Yeah. It uh, proves your point. Doug, look up, is uh, mineral sunscreens more effective at preventing sunscreen than chemical A sun sunscreen? Damage and why you're doing sunburn? that, why not? Okay, so if it's if it's healthy enough and good enough for your face, why not use it for the entire body? If it's 30 SPF. Well, you can. Well, you can. Yeah, this one's geez. particularly designed for the face, but I mean, they sell them for the whole body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what my, my point well, you is. You can use them all over the body. Yeah, well, why wouldn't it just be sunscreen and healthy for the face? Yeah. Is, there, is there a marketing reason behind that, you think? No, but I do think that when you're putting uh, sunscreens on your face, that they'll put other compounds in there to re reduce the odds of like breakouts and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, like good. Because some sunscreens, you'll cause you to break out. But also, chemical sunscreens burn when you sweat and they get in your eyes. Ever happen to you? Oh, yeah. I hate that. Oh, dude, it's the worst. Oh, yeah. I can't stand that. Uh, yeah, so, that? yes, mineral sunscreens offer more uh, the most protection because they're literally creating a physical separation between you and the sun. Interesting. Yeah. Damn. So why, okay, then why, uh, if blingo, it's, blingo. It's, better, <laughs> it's better for you, so it's healthier, Yeah. it's more effective. Yeah. Is it because it's expensive? No. I think why? partly because of the white haze. Yes, that they can leave. No, no, no. I'm, okay, my question is, why the fuck does anyone make any chemical ones? If, because, yeah, because of, of the said. white haze. The mineral ones tend to leave, you can tell uh, oftentimes that you Except rub something. Except for Calderas. Theirs is, theirs is pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's why they made it specifically for the face partly is because- people have a problem with that. You know, obviously I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I don't mind looking like a mime, but uh, <laughs> yeah, because people don't like having a white haze on their face. So mm. they don't, they don't use it. So they switch to the chemical stuff instead. And then they get the long-term effects from using that all the time. Ah, so. You want to hear what a douchebag I used to be back in the day? Mm, I yes. used to buy, uh, it wasn't, it was this like, was like last week. No, <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I still used to. <laughs> It's not right now. No, that's when I was way younger. I used to buy tanning oil, okay? Yeah, yeah. That you spray on, 
And the only reason why I wore it is because it made me like glistening. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. put it on, walk around like, mm, you know, <laughs> bathroom push-ups. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's now graduated to bathroom push-ups. That's what it's graduated. I don't, I've never in my life <laughs> done laundry, you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what my, a terrible that's rumor. That's my favorite rumor that I've started because yeah. I, I think people really believe that. That I do push-ups yeah. in the bathroom? <laughs> I think they, I think they do really believe that. Yeah. And then Justin rubs baby oil on you afterwards. Uh, <laughs> wow. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember that one, part, dude. Yeah, he add, just added another element to that. Or maybe it's Doug. Yeah, he's jealous. Well. Doug, he's I jealous. I was in the other room. <laughs> All right. Do we have a shout out for today? Uh, no. That guy. Let's find. Let's that find guy. Him. That one guy. At, oh, you know guy. what? You know who we should shout out? I was just on his podcast. Oh, uh, Drew. Yeah, Pru- yeah, yeah. Pruitt? We haven't given Pruitt. him one, right? No. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, so, so today's shout out. So I've I've been on this guy's show twice. His name is Drew Pirouette. He's got an exceptional podcast. He's a really good interviewer. Very intelligent. Uh, the, he asks the right questions, knows how to, to steer the conversation. He does a really good job, and he's just his channel is continuing to explode. If you're into health, science, wellness, uh, this you got to give this guy a listen. He's really, really good. Very, very entertaining. And again, he's got great guests uh, on his show, so check him out. Check this out. There are botanicals out there, herbs that have been shown to improve the body's ability to adapt to stress. All right, what does that mean? Well, building muscle, burning body fat, getting faster, more stamina. That's all adaptations to stress. But also, when you're overstressed, you can't think as sharply. You don't get good sleep. You just feel crappy. Well, anyway, there's a company that makes a product called Stress Guardian, which combines the 14 best adaptogenic herbs in one one product to help your body acclimate to stress better. Go check them out. Go to stressguardian.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jamie from Canada. Jamie, what's happening? How can we help hey, you? Hey, guys. How are you? We're good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, selecting me to ask my question. Uh, big fan of you guys. I'm going to try not to be a fanboy. So, uh, hmm. you know, this is just as cool as when I met uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. Uh, yeah. so oh my awesome. god yeah. this is really pretty that awesome pretty that's awesome. a crazy yeah, twice what an honor okay yeah. cool ask this question yeah so um my question it has to do with calories um as i said in my email i am averaging between 2900 and 3000 calories uh per day uh, i track my you know my food as best as i possibly can however it's my job that i'm concerned about so i in, in a very physical demanding job. Uh, I work for Pepsi. And so like, it's very um, on my feet. I'm lifting pallets. I'm, you know, walking between 15 to 25,000 steps a day. Um, my goal is to be at a 20% body fat around there. It's like, I don't feel this too outrageous right now. I'm at 29 to 30% uh, body fat. So I mean, I, I feel like I have a long ways to go, but um, I'm I'm doing a button a couple of your programs, and so I've been doing. I started with Maps Anabolic, uh, did the whole phase, and then I listened to you guys about having a busy work lifestyle, and you know, s- suggested maybe doing the Maps Fifteen. So then I purchased that, and um, you know, that was when I. Did I had my PR in my deadlift and I reached 315 because I was had those calories, but my body fat percentage wasn't going down. So then I kind of got discouraged and then I went on vacation. And then since I've come back from vacation, it's just been a an uphill struggle. So this is where like help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. So you started uh, with Maps Anabolic. You did Maps fifteen. You got your PO, your deadlift up to three fifteen. What did your body weight change within that period of time? It says here in the email that you're two twenty five. I think it said. Did it your bo- went bo- up. It, it, it did go up to like currently right now. I weighed myself this morning. I'm at two thirty with a body fat percentage of still twenty eight percent. Wait a minute. So your body fat percentage was twenty eight percent when you started. It stayed twenty eight percent, and you went up five pounds. Yes. Okay. Do, maybe someone could let me, let me do some of this math uh, while I talk to you because you gained lean body mass. You might have gained a little bit of body fat, but you also gained some muscle, lean muscle. body mass for right. sure. And getting stronger, I mean, that's great. So you had sixty three pounds of total body fat on your body at two twenty five. Now you're at two thirty at twenty eight percent body fat. 
you're at 64.4 pounds of body fat. So you literally went up 1.4 pounds of body fat, but almost four pounds of lean body mass. How are you testing that's your amazing. body fat? Yeah, that's a good question. So that I was I was expecting you guys to ask, ask that. So I use just a Renfo Smart Scale. It's nothing fantastic, like nothing yeah. like scientific or whatever. It's just and I body, I know yeah. that you guys Impedance. have said. Sorry. Oh, it's the uh, bioelectric impedance, I believe. The we hold it. So or, here's or, here's or, the here's the good news about. I, I think you actually just uh, you shouldn't have been discouraged. You should have actually been very happy. I was just yeah. going to say. The fact that you added five pounds on the scale, you got stronger, and your body fat percentage stayed the same is actually a really good sign you're heading the right direction. Correct. So you're actually on, yeah, you're actually right on track. It's, yeah. one, it's a slow process, You ha especially when you are keeping your calories up and we're, we're trying to build muscle. It's going to be this real slow exchange of you lose a little bit of body fat, you build a little bit of muscle, you lose, but- Man, the, the signs of getting stronger and hitting a PR like that and not seeing the body fat percentage trend up is a really good sign that you are actually right in a nice sweet spot. You're mm -hmm. actually doing great, man. Yeah, I, so so here's what it typically looks like, Jamie, when with someone like you, right? So how long has it been since you've been, you started working out with our programs? Because it sounded like you did one phase of anabolic and one to MAPS-15. Like how, how many months or weeks have you yeah, been doing so, this? Uh... I think I, well, it was kind of immediately after I started listening to you guys, I would say about a year. So maybe, uh, maybe six months okay. to just under a year ago when I started listening to you guys. And okay. then I bought Maps Anabolic and then I finished the whole phase, like one, two, three. And then, um, and then I transferred over to Maps 15. But I was also doing both at the same time. So I was doing MAPS anabolic, the like foundation workouts. And then on my days off, like the, in between days, I would do a MAPS 15, like just two exercises. And okay. I would just kind of work out five days a week. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Here's what I want. I'm going to give you some advice right now. Do yes. not try to create your own programming. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. So taking our programs and combining them, unless you're advised by one of us, and we'll tell you specifically what to do which we almost never do, by the way, with programs. Um, what you're going to do is make both programs less effective mm -hmm. is what you're going to okay. do. Okay. Because there's a lot that goes into programming that uh, it takes a lot of experience to kind of understand how to write programs, how to make them effective. It still yes. worked because uh, you still got stronger, but you probably would have got better results had you not combined them. If you just stuck with, stuck with MAPS Anabolic or just stuck with MAPS 15, you probably have some did better you, results. Did you actually hit a PR when you were doing Mass 15 and Anabolic combined together? Or is that after? Uh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow. What was your deadlift at when you started, by the way? Uh, I think it was two plates. So, so 225. 225. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. So when you follow our programs, follow one, don't combine them. Okay. So follow one, don't combine it. This is what it typically looks like with someone like you, uh, with your experience and, and what you're saying is you'll gain muscle first. You'll get stronger first. You might get a little body fat loss at first, but typically it's the muscle gain and the strength. And then you get this kind of snowball effect. Yeah. Okay. Where if you, you know, imagine a snowball going down a hill and it starts off kind of slow, but as it starts to pick up more snow, it starts to speed up and then it starts to gain size faster and faster. So in, in this case, the fat loss starts off very slow. Muscle gain happens first, but then you start to th see things start to snowball as the metabolism speeds up, as you continue to get stronger, as you start to do things better and better, you start to see faster and faster results versus what a lot of people experience when they do things the wrong way is they get this initial weight loss and then they plateau super hard. So it's like, oh, 15 pounds lost or 10 pounds lost and then nothing. So you're, you're moving in the right direction for sure. Now it says here you're averaging about 2,800 to 3,000 calories. How Correct. do you feel, how, how do you feel eating that? Does that feel adequate or do you feel like you want to eat more? Are you hungry? Um, I feel like I can eat more because of like throughout the day I'm, I'm so active. Uh, you know, I, I try to hundred percent try to do my protein, but my fats and carbs are kind of later in the day because I'm in my car about 800 miles a week average because I'm driving to and from uh, store to store. So like I don't necessarily have a 
you know, something to eat during the day per se, other than a shake. I'll have a couple of shakes and then maybe, you know, a, a, a sandwich, like turkey sandwich or something. Mm. And but then at nighttime when I'm at home is when I'll have my whole foods. Like I'll have a chicken with some rice, potatoes, vegetables, that sort of thing. Okay. Are you, are you hitting 200 grams of protein at least every single day? That I was, I'm glad you asked that because I am, but I'm also doing more. Like I'm, I'm averaging maybe 230. That's fine. You know, that's, that's okay. take. That's I good. go from 200 to 230 on a day to day average, like never less, that's, never less than 200. You're on the right track. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. a good sign. That's you're good. totally on the right track. If, I, I would keep your calories where they're at, be consistent with your workouts and continue to try to get stronger. And, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm, I just bought on Black Friday your Maps Anabolic Advance. Should I transfer back? To- no, not yet. I would go. I no. would continue okay. to do Maps Run it 15. The way it's laid out. I, I like the idea of Maps 15, and the only thing time I would toggle back to Maps Anabolic right now is only if you had like time off or your 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 movement at work slowed down. I think for how much you move and how physically active you are at work, Maps 15 is probably going to give you the best results right now. And so I would okay. follow just that. And like Sal said, eat the way you're eating, hit your protein and take like you're doing and just be patient. And really the sign of body fat percentage staying the same while you're getting stronger is a, is a really good place to be right if now. If you start to get yeah. stronger, which I, which I, I am going to estimate that you will. Okay. If you follow MAP 15 and, and you eat your, you hit your protein and you're not eating heavily processed foods and that kind of stuff, right? If you're, and you get good sleep, if you're, if you're doing that, then what'll probably happen is your body weight will stay the same or go down a little bit, but you'll continue to get stronger. If that happens, you are gold. Mm-hmm. If your okay. weight, if if the weight on the bar is going up and your body yep. weight is the same or starts to go down, you're crushing. You're kicking ass. Okay. And on my days off, should I do MAPS anabolic or just strictly no, stay no, at no. 15? Yeah, yeah. No. Follow the program okay. as it's laid out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Trust, trust the process. 100%. Be, I'm, you know what? Let's, uh, are, are you on Facebook? Can we put you in the forum? I, th- that would be phenomenal. I've, I've heard about this, but you, yes. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Let's, I'm going to have Doug put you, put you in the private forum, and then I just like would love to hear an update from you, say, three or four weeks down the road. Let us know Yeah, because we're going to want to change gears at some point to where we start mm-hmm. to cut calories. I just don't think cutting calories right now is the best approach. I agree. But at some point, we will cut calories. And if you're in the forum and giving us updates every 30 days or so, then we'll be able to better assess when that'll happen, when that should happen. For sure. I will definitely do that. Thank you so much. I just want to say, uh, Sal, I, I, I resonate with you because I have a 14 year old daughter as well. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm hundred percent with you, Adam. Uh, I'm a big baller. I love basketball. I'm sorry that my Raptors, you know, took out your warriors <laughs> in, uh, years ago. and, uh, Justin, I'm a big paranormal person too. And I've watched <laughs> both seasons of, uh, ghost town terror. So, oh, wow. uh, great show. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Uh, I love you. Thank you very much for answering my question. Hey, appreciate, thank you, man. appreciate it, Jamie. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Yep. Bye now. Um, when it comes to the pursuit of fat loss, fitness, improving your health, you said something, Adam, that I don't think we, we do communicate it, but we don't say it directly enough. Patience. Mm-hmm. Patience is such is so key because more people's programs, more people's pursuits more people have been screwed up by wanting to rush the process. Self-sabotage. Yeah. Uh, not I mean, even, it's, it's not the number one thing. And then adding to it. And so that's why I love that we steered them back to Mass 15 because, yeah. you know, having that basis and really assessing like what, uh, how it's benefiting you, because you can always add versus subtracting is, is, a, is a different place to be. I can't tell you how many times or what percentage of people – hurt themselves meaning not hurt like physically hurt but hurt their programming when they were doing great i i would think i would say more often than not yep. somebody was actually doing really well and ended up altering what they were doing because they didn't see the results and this by the way too this also speaks to why we're not big fans of the before and afters and the look what i lost in 30 days yeah. and the, and highlighting it only encourages that because yeah. then then it gets this perception to somebody like Jamie 
who's actually doing really good. In fact, he may be doing perfect. You're right. But because he doesn't see this massive swing in his body fat percentage, or he doesn't see the scale drop way down, like then he assumes that he must be because he's listening to all the other advice we're giving. I must be doing something Look, wrong. And then they, yes. then, then what does he do? Piles more workouts in, mm -hmm. or does too much, or does what he does. It's like, man, you you're doing great. You just don't realize that it just takes time. It's a slow process. Yeah, look, here's the bottom line: if you're progressing, okay, if you are progressing, there's no such thing as too slow. But there's definitely such a thing is too fast, 100%. So keep that in mind when you're trying to pursue whatever fitness goal you have. Our next caller is Caitlin from Wyoming. Hey, Caitlin. How can we help you? Hey, guys. This is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll just get right into it. Um, I've been listening for just over a year, probably not even, um, and your content is awesome. I have... I started as somebody who loved to work out like hit style, high intensity training, um, just get as much sweat as possible. And now I've transitioned after listening to you guys to just uh, mainly focus on really heavy lifting. Um, however, um, I'm finding I have a lot of difficulty with my grip strength. Um, I've been, I've got about halfway through anabolic and um, I feel like I could actually lift heavier, but my like forearm strength, my grip strength tends to give out. And that's, um, that's in the traditional deadlift, but also sometimes I'll try to do like a single leg deadlift, just holding dumbbells. And I, I definitely could go heavier there, but it's, my forearms are weak. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I know a while back I went back and I tried to find it, but um, you guys talked about like a correlating calf strength versus grip strength. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I am a case study of that. I yeah. was genetically blessed with uh, great thick muscular calves, but I don't seem to have a great forearm grip strength. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, I was looking for some help there. Yeah. Okay. So okay. by the way, there's no science to support that. It was, it was like a funny, it was like a funny no, thing. I'm a case study. Yeah. I'm a case study. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to rephrase your question because- okay. uh, People, when they look at the grip, for some reason, they don't put it in the same category as, let's say, other muscles or body parts when doing a lift. So I'm going to I'm gonna say something that's similar to what you said, but I think it'll highlight the point that I'm trying to make. So, hey, I can squat. I think I could squat way more than I can, but my legs aren't strong enough. So it sounds very obvious. I, well, okay, well, yeah, obviously. So if your hands aren't strong enough to hold the bar, then that's the weight that you can lift. In other words, you may feel like you can lift more weight if you had different hands, but you can't. Therefore, that's your limit. So work within your limit. However, there's a second part to this, which is I've identified a weakness. How can I get this weakness to speed up its progress? Or how can I pull up this weak chain in the link, right? And so the way to do this, first off, there's a couple things you could do to improve your grip just because it helps with the bar slipping out. You could try chalk or liquid chalk. So if you go to a gym, they won't let you use chalk. You could buy something called liquid chalk, which most gyms are okay with you using, and it'll make your hands less slippery on the bar. And actually, the studies will show that chalk will add between 2 to 5% more strength to somebody's uh, grip when they're holding on to something. And that's usually enough to make a significant difference. So try that. The second thing is... <clears throat> Take some volume off of your arm exercises. In other words, take some sets off your bicep exercises and your tricep exercises and then add some grip or forearm exercises. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is a lot of times people will say, I want my grip to get stronger and they just add volume or add exercises for grip strength without taking them away from somewhere else and then they overwhelm their body with just too much overall volume. So let's say you're doing... An arm workout, and let's say that day you're going to do six sets for your biceps. Well, you could do just three sets and then do three sets dedicated towards strengthening your grip. And there's a lot of exercises that'll help you do this. You could do farmer walks. You could do wrist curls. You could even buy a gripper, and they sell varying degrees of intensity with grippers to where you're actually doing it as an exercise. And then you'll find like any of the body part, it'll start to get stronger and start to catch up. Yeah. I 100% agree with all that tip. I also found um, training singles, doubles, and triples did this for me too. Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever done that before where, because most of our programming is five reps, right? So the phase minimum. one is is a minimum of five reps. We, we don't normally program 
three reps of anything or two reps or one rep of anything, not because uh, any other reason that there, there's high risk for someone who's never lifted before. And so we don't program it in, but I do think there's value in training this way. So what you would do is like, let's say when you're in a maps anabolic phase, phase one, and instead of doing five reps, you might do uh, two reps. So pick an even heavier weight and only do two reps. But you're not maxing out though. You're right. You're yeah. not. Yeah. You're, you're just picking a heavier weight than what you could do five. Cause you, cause now you're only having to do two and just the body adapting to holding on to a heavier weight yeah. tends to build strength in the forearms and grip strength. And a lot of times when the grip gives out, it's not the first one it gives out on. It gives out on rep four or five. It's like you feel it probably slipping out of your hands, right? And so just you training an even heavier getting weight. Getting comfortable. With yeah, it. getting comfortable with holding on to a heavier weight for one rep or two reps and then and then you know then setting the bar down. Uh, you'll see sometimes your grip strength and forth. I I felt yeah. that personally the most come up from just simply doing that. It's usually the unfamiliar uh, things you introduce to your body where you're, you're going to have to work a little harder, and so it may seem like that's the 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 point where of failure because um, you know you're trying to hold something you're not you're not quite as familiar with that weight or uh, that particular grip, and so to train that a little bit more frequently makes a lot of sense, and, and also too like the the muscle the must muscle endurance uh, component to that. We mentioned um, farmer walks and things like that. We're actually holding something heavy uh, and walking with it. Uh, I, I found to be very, very helpful and translates well when you're trying to hold and grip something because a lot of times too is like, you know, you're going through the rep and, and you think it's a short amount of time, but after a few of these reps, it's, it's really, it's the endurance part of it where I'm not used to holding something heavy for that long. So that's where the fail point the is. Key, the key to this though will be if, if you add anything to the routine, like the farmer walks or pinch grip stuff or some of the things that Sal was suggesting is to make sure that you take away you replace yeah you replace something else in the workout because the mistake i think somebody makes when they're in pursuit of like grip strength is they pile on to their already heavy and they overtrain yeah and then they just overdo it and then they get weaker sometimes sometimes they'll come back and be like i don't understand i started doing all these four well, exercises tennis elbow or yeah now i can't now i can lift less weight and so the key would be just you know pulling pulling some things out some arm exercises out of the routine and adding in these forearm ones but I really, I really like the farmer walks, and I really like the suggestion of the singles and doubles and triples. I found that those, those are two big things that helped me personally. Kaylin, just to give you a little personal, just a you know anecdote that might encourage you a little bit. So I, I started working out as a kid uh, in my backyard, and very quickly, probably by the time I was sixteen or seventeen, so I was fourteen when I started working out. By the time I was sixteen or seventeen. I had learned about a tool called wrist straps and bodybuilders use these. And what they do is they go around your wrist and they wrap them around the bar. And basically it holds the bar for you. You barely have to use any grip strength and allows you to use more weight, et cetera, et cetera. And so because the bodybuilders did it, I bought some, they're very inexpensive. And I always used wrist straps for every back exercise up until probably the age of, I want to say maybe it was my late twenties. So I'm maybe 27. And then I had this trainer that I worked with who just explained this to me. It's like, well, you know, your our hands are meant to be very strong. And I knew this, you know, kind of uh, on the side because my father worked blue collar work. His hands were always very strong. And I said, yeah, you know, you're right. Like, you know, I've been using these wrist straps. You know, I wonder how strong I can get my hands or whatever. And so I decided, I remember like yesterday, I literally decided I'm never going to use wrist straps again and I'm going to just work out without them. It took me over two years for my hands to catch up to the strength that my back and my legs could produce. So it took a long time for my hands to get that strength. So be patient. They will get strong. And again, our hands are just not strong. I mean, aside from working out, when do you really test out the strength of your hands? Probably never. Most people don't. So give it some time and they'll catch up. You will be able to hold on to the weight that you can that you can lift. It won't feel like right now there's this huge discrepancy. You just got to give it some time. Okay. Well, yeah, because I've been using like for years and years, like 20 pound dumbbells in each hand. And exactly. now I'm going up like 200 pound barbell. Right. And so it's a huge, Quite a huge transition. Yeah. Um, the, the next question I have is I've seen people do like an overhand grip or like a flip grip, like yeah. one overhand, one underhand. Have you found that that's helpful or beneficial in any way? You'll lift more weight yeah. with what's called an alternate grip. So one hand forward, one hand back, you will for sure be able to hold on to more weight. 
There is some risk to it though. Uh, and I get a personal anecdote. I trained that way as well. When I would deadlift real heavy, I got into the habit of always using the same alternate grip when I would hit my top heavy sets and I developed an imbalance. So if you use an alternate grip, cause you can't hold on to more weight when you deadlift doing this. If you do always switch it off and make sure you're even on which hand is supinated, which hand is pronated. Otherwise you will, you will develop an imbalance that'll be all the way up and down the kinetic chain, which is what happened to me. I had my, my left side was definitely more developed than my right side as a result. The other option is use what's called a hook grip that Olympic lifters use. However, this sucks and yeah, it hurts and it takes a long time to get hard, used to. Very difficult. It took me over two and a half years to really get that mastered. So you can use the alternate grip. Just every set, make sure you alternate it. You're, Don't favor one side. I, I mean, I, I want, yeah. want to reiterate, just be patient. I mean, you're doing really, you literally yeah. have just kind of made this transition in the last year. I mean, and you're already lifting heavier weights. It'll come. Yeah. Like, it'll, it, it's, sure. you keep dead lifting and, and pushing the strength. The, the grip will, will come along. You take some of the pieces of advice we're given. It, it's going to be, I think you're doing phenomenal already. But to your point, for years and years and years, you trained all these light weights and hit style. And like for the first time in your life, you're lifting heavy yeah. weights and, totally you're, get, different and, intention and you're getting now. strong. And now yeah. the hands just got to catch up and they will. They yep. will. Yep. By the way, you, are you pull, you're pulling over 200 pounds off the floor? Yeah. Great job. Yeah. yeah you you're went doing, from 20 pound dumbbells to 200 pounds. Yeah. You're doing phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. cow. What are the changes in your body from, by the way, just, if you don't mind me asking training the way you did before with all the hit stuff or whatever to getting stronger, what have you noticed? Um, yeah, well, that's, that's been interesting because in anticipation of this call, you know, I kind of stepped on the scale for the first time today in a long time and my weight is up heavier than it's been in a long time. But, you know, I, I am pro in a smaller size gene than I've ever been in. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. It was kind of a weird mind game this morning when I stepped on the scale. I'm like, oh, you know, I haven't seen that number since babies. But, um, <laughs> Don't, but the scale's in stupid. It is. The yeah, scale, the scale, yeah. Like, so, I mean, that's, that's exactly what you want. Would you rather weigh yeah, less and look yeah. worse or look better and weigh, weigh more? You know what I mean? Who cares? Yeah. Who yeah. cares? What, but that happens to every what, female I've ever trained. They what, always, I tell them not to weigh themselves. What, what does your partner say? That's what, that's the better, that's the better question. <laughs> yeah. He, he loves where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, there's, Excellent. yeah, he's, <laughs> there's the, there's the better person to ask that question. And if sure. something happens, there's an accident, you can pick him up now and help him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I came up, I told him, I just, I just deadlifted 200 pounds. That's, that's yeah. him. Yeah. That's, so that's awesome. That's awesome. I was pretty stoked about that. That's very, great. Very cool. Well, th thanks for calling in, Caitlin. I what program are you following right now of ours? Uh, I, I've been bouncing around uh, just with Matt's anabolic and then just doing my own thing. Like I said, I've, I'm not, it's new to me. So it's been a little, it's been crazy. You know, I've really liked anabolic. I haven't gotten all the way through it because I'll do, I'll run it for a week and then I kind of just go do my own thing, which probably isn't great. Oh, and then Caitlin, I'm jump back to it. Listen to me. Listen <laughs> yeah. to me. Follow our program all the way through. Oh, if you yeah. want the best results, okay. I'm going to send you another exactly. program. I think you're going to like strong. Yeah. God, you read my, read my yeah, mind. Yeah. I'm going to send you map strong. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I so would love that. Follow, but please, can you promise you'll finish it? Otherwise I won't, I'll make you I, buy it. I won't give it to you. For free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I promise. I yeah. promise. We're going to come for our money later. All if right. We find all out right. You're follow it. You're going to love it. You're going to love map strong. Okay. I would, I would love that. Thank you guys so much. You got it. Thanks for calling him. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. The whole grip thing. It's like, listen, here's the bottom line. There, there's always a weak link that is going to determine the max weight you can lift. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter what that weak link is. Yeah. That's the weight you can lift. Yeah. Now you can add things to make you lift weight in which case, like I can deadlift X amount of pounds with a belt on. I make sure to tell people that cause I take the belt off yeah. and the weight goes down a good 30, 40 pounds. So there's always a weak link. That's the determining factor. And if, unless you don't care about having a balanced body, you don't want strong hands. If you're just fine. strong in the gym, you know, you should evaluate that. Yeah. Yep. I, I think she's doing a great job. I Crushing. Think, and then after we find out that she's not even following the program all the way to a T, I think just her doing that, she's going to see it come up. Oh my totally. God. Just I, I love what she said. She's heavier, but in smaller clothes. Yeah, smaller Ladies, jeans. pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Next caller is Kevin from Nevada. Kevin, how do what we join up? that gang Kevin. That you're representing? Yeah. What is that, dad gang? I, I don't know I could be in a gang as a dad. What is yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, that gang, like the best gang to be in, right, guys? That's we have to awesome. be jumped in or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? No, I mean, you got looks like looks like you got a bunch of questions. So let's let's start with the most important ones so we can get at least answer those. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So um for context, um, I do want to go into really quick. I'll save the thank you for the end because it, it might be too long. I actually have thank you for each of you, including Doug. 
Um, so I'll save that to the end. But uh, for context, I am 30 years old. I have two kids. Um, and I, so I personally have never started and even touched a barbell until I was 27 years old. Um, more for the ignorance through like my whole family's generation is like, you're going to get hurt from that. That's all we knew. Um, so until you guys, until I found you guys, um, is when I actually did strength training with, you know, barbell work. So now I am in power, the maps power lift. I love it because I found out, um, some of my friends have told me like to try and join some powerlifting meets. I don't want to do that yet, but I am on this peak phase. I just started it this week and I was wondering, I know it says on the calendar to rest for a week or it says a, a rest day on like the second half of that last week. And then I don't know when to attempt the one rep max, like the new one rep max. Do I wait a full week? Um, yes. I'll go with that. Yes. Typically, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Typically, you wait wait a full week. Now, that doesn't mean you necessarily do nothing. Although, although I know a lot of lifters will they, do yeah. very little. But what you can do, and this is what I used to like to do whenever I would set myself up for an attempted PR, is I would definitely have that week off in terms of heavy training or hard training, and I would just go to the gym and practice technique. Yeah. That's all I would do. So I would really go very light. Weight. That's yeah. it. And what a lot of times what will happen is when you're practicing technique, you might feel it like that. Like that, I, I always personally could just know like, oh, today's going to be oh, the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like there's going to be times where you are planning a PR day and you're just not going to feel it. You're going to, that yeah. first 135 warm-up set is going to feel like a, a yeah. million pounds. And you're like, today's not the day you do that. And then other days- I think it's a better way to do that's it. That's how I, so th I like to have that a week scheduled as I'm not going to try and PR for the, until this next week. And sometime in that time period, I'm kind of working on technique and I'm going, I'm basing it off of how I feel in the warm up on if I'm going to try and That's get it. after it today. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so that to me is a better strategy than saying, Hey, five days after the end of the program, then go hit your PR. Well, yeah. if you didn't get good night's sleep the night before, it's not a good strategy whatsoever. Yeah. But, and maybe three days after you're already well rested, well fed, the warm up weight is like coming up off the floor easy, go get it. Yeah. So that's kind of how- And one thing is it. for sure, you won't get weaker if you took a week off. That's mm -hmm. not how, strength doesn't go down that fast unless you get sick or, or, or there's other circumstances. Got it. And, and yeah, that answers, I guess, one of my other questions of what light exercises, but it'll, it'll all be just the technique work. Like yeah, I, I used to do foam rolling, mobility and practice. I would practice the exercise and that'll always set me up very well. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then now the diet part, um, I've, I've just been on a maintenance, like throughout this whole program, never changed it one bit. I'm at like 27 to 2,900 calories a day. And for context on that, I am, I'm a small guy. I'm five, four, 149 pounds. So that amount of food for me is like, I've never ate that much in my life. I used to be at like 1500, 1600. Awesome. Wow, that's great. Um, should I just stay there before I hit this or attempt the one rep or do I now push a little bit more on the calories? Oh yeah. Push it. So, okay. So I'll give you some, some, these are, by the way, these are little hacks. They're not going to like be the big game chainers, but they will, they will add something. So boost I would always say what you're going to boost his cholesterol. Well, I wouldn't even, that's even one, that's even a step yeah. further than what I'm going to say. I would go 48 hours before I would bump your calories. So I would go up, you know, you're at 2,700. I would eat closer to 3,100 calories 48 hours before and stay consistent with that. Make sure two hours before the lift, you have an easily digestible. Yes. So something doesn't that's blow you. That's the important you. part. Yeah. yeah. Easily digestible meal. I would also, if do you, do you, do you drink coffee or take caffeine or pre-workout? Uh, pre-workout, I drink Celsius sometimes throughout the day. Okay. I would wean yourself down caffeine for the week off. So let's say you have 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. I would get it down to 200 or less leading up to the day of. Then the day of, go with your full dose. It'll hit you like a Mack truck and you're going to feel like super powered from it. Look, those two things alone would typically get me a nice five to 10 pounds over what I would normally be able to do. Got it. And then I, the, my last question, I think I already answered this for myself. I am looking to compete next year just because some of my friends have told me like the weight class that I could be in. It is pretty uh, possible I might place. I don't know. I might, I'm trying to hit like a 405 deadlift, 205 bench and 375 squat. I don't know if that's even. Holy that's, shit. Yeah, yeah, for that's your weight, great, bro, that's great. Those, what, did, yeah, what have you done with your deadlift at 145 pounds? What have you hit? 
Well, on the deadlift right now, I'm at 395. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, you're, bro, you're strong. You're, yeah, you're strong. You're strong as hell. Especially considering you just now really yeah, got into this started. last couple of years. Did you, you just started? Yeah. I just started. Uh, you mean MAPS Powerlift or you mean strength No, just training? in general. You said yeah. 27. You said you're 30, right? You've only been lifting for two or three years now? Yeah. Like, oh, wow. I never. Yeah, bro. You're, you're doing good. Do you pull sumo? No, conventional, just because I think that looks better. Wow. <laughs> and you pull conventional? Agreed. Agreed, bro. Have you tried yeah, the social media thing? I don't want to pull sumo. Hey, listen, just for fun. Count. I know you didn't ask this question, but just for fun. guy. Uh, typically, when you're shorter sure. in size, the sumo style typically gives you better leverage. So you might want to mess around with that, see what happens. I like your idea, though, of doing conventional. <laughs> yeah. Just as yeah. yeah. far I as you can, bro. I'm pro conventional. I tell Lane all the time it doesn't count. His deadlifts don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he loves um, that. No, no. I, so I am trying to see what I would max out at this year before I even try and do a meet next year. So I'm thinking, is it best to just stay as keep it all squat bench that live in one day when I attempt this instead of trying to split it out? Oh, so, like to like to like to mirror a competition. I mean, you can. Yeah. You're the, you're you're not literally training for a meet right now, so I'm, it's kind of like whatever. You don't. I don't think it's that necessary. And I think when you get ready for your first real meet, by the way, too, if I can encourage you to sign up sooner than later, you'll be happy because. And I know getting on stage is different than competing in a powerlifting meet, but part of like. Uh, you're going to want to just sign up and get through the process. Yeah. Is that first so one? You know get, what to expect. Yeah, what to expect, mm -hmm. getting the nerves out, mm -hmm. how I should eat before. There's a lot of things that you're going to need to figure out, and you'd rather get that out sooner than later anyways than, than try and time it all. Like, I'm going to get my strongest I've ever been in my life, and on top of that, I'm gonna, this is going to be my first time ever doing an event. It's like get the first mm -hmm. event jitters out of the way of like, what's it like? I'm the new guy. It takes some this... of the pressure out of it. Yeah, too, it does. Yeah. It'll t that way, when you go in the second time, yeah. you, you've you already got that out. And now you're, so that would be my advice yeah, is sooner I, I than later. Do, I do like doing them all three on the same day though, because. That's just going to mirror the event. Yeah, yeah. And get used to the feel of it. And to be honest with you, when you do each of them separately, the, the, there's always a question of which one do I do today? Which one do I do tomorrow? Which one do I do the day after? Mm -hmm. I would mirror the meat. And, and 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 do them in that order and take a long break in between your maxes. So, you know, I would do your whatever you start with your squat. I would wait, you know, 20 minutes before attempting to go for my deadlift. And then same thing. And then my bench, you can maybe not rest as much, but I would give me, give yourself like a couple hours to do all of them. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And now, now it brings me to another question, Adam, you brought up, maybe sign up a little bit earlier than waiting till next year fall or something. I was planning on, because of what you guys have helped me understand with body composition change and just reverse dieting, I was planning on, I bought split because I want to now achieve like the best aesthetic look I've ever had for the summer. I was planning on starting that January, just so it kind of reaches up until summer where you can go swim and you kind of show off what you got. Yeah. Is that going to hurt me and affects the strength to try and do that, then go back into powerless? No, no, no. It'll no, it'll only help you. you. No, yeah. yeah. And honestly, right transit. right now, you just hearing your numbers already. You're already at strength. You're not going to go embarrass yourself. You're going to do well, yeah. whether you win or not. Your first time, who cares? Go. I would sign up. Go do it. No matter what you're programming right now, like you're already strong enough in those lips that you're going to go have a good experience. That's. I mean, whether you you go win or not, I think you're going to have a good yeah. experience. And so I would go sign up for that, no matter where I'm kind of at and what type of program I'm following, get that out of the way. And then when you're like, okay, now that I know what this is going to be like, yep. you go, I'm going to pick this date. I'm going to follow the program three months before. And then you could really like dial it all in. And, and, and during that process, running split to interrupt it in the middle is, is only going to help you. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Thank you guys. Yep. Now, um, I do want to do the thank you before I, I get off of here. Um, if I can, sure. and now this is to each of you, uh, before I even start the thank you though, I want to give context on this. I mentioned I'd never started strength training until 27 years old, again, from ignorance and really from embarrassment. Uh, my insecurity is being small. I would hate, I hated even trying to walk into the gym. All I did was play basketball, but when I would pass the strength training part, I would see, of course, like I'm small, I'm a guy. I see girls like doing lifts that I'm like, there's no freaking way I can do this. So I'll just like walk by. Um, bench would always scare the crap out of me because I see I'm like, what the hell? Like, what am I going to do? Like try and lift up that barbell. And if I like, I don't know, commit suicide <laughs> with my neck, <laughs> like I don't want to even do that. Um, so all I knew was, do you guys know Mike Chang, six pack? Yeah, 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 Mike Chang. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, I do. That's all I knew back then. So <laughs> hit training, I would think I would have Mike Chang's um, aesthetic. Never would have that. I'd more have. I'd much more have like of a Smurf body. <laughs> <you can say. laughs> it did not look good. I'm short, so it did not look good. Um, so here's what I did. I actually heard of you guys back in like 2016. I didn't really listen. I, I was just like, you know, I was I was listening, but I didn't hear I didn't hear anything. Then I'll, I heard something about like, you know, go to a trainer. I went to Lifetime Fitness because my ignorance is like, go to the most expensive gym. I'm probably going to definitely get results. I'm paying a lot. I went to this trainer. I told this trainer I want to look like Manny Pacquiao in like six months. <laughs> wow. I said, got it. I'll do it. He gave me, he put me on this like, I was already eating maybe 1600 calories. He got me like 300 less calories a day made me not eat carbs, told me when I go to the bathroom, just like, be ready. It's going to be like liquid. I felt like crap. Wow. So I was traumatized. And again, now I was like 25 years old at this time, finally trying to do something else than basketball. Um, again, I only heard of you guys or started listening to you guys again, because I was going to have my first kid, my son. And I was embarrassed internally. I, I would never feel proud of myself. I was embarrassed because I could barely even pick up my nephews like for a long period of time. So I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to be a dad that can't even pick up his own son. And here I am looking like I'm like an eighth grader. I look like I'm probably like Justin's kid. Like, there's no <laughs> way um, I don't want to be like that. Now, I do want to thank you guys big time. This is the thank you. Um, I've never been more proud of myself. And I never knew that I would even have this kind of feeling. Um, not only as a as being strong, like I feel super strong now. Um, I've, I've never thought at 30 is when I can even still continue to grow. Um, and then as far as strength or, or doing this kind of training, I'll post this on social media. I didn't know this would naturally like I've, I've never met more friends. So I know Sal, you always mentioned like the gym space is probably the most friendly space. Yep. I've met more people because of this. Never got more respect, never got more close to so many people that are like growth minded. Um, met so many other people that are parents trying to do the same damn thing. Um, so it's crazy. And I want to thank you guys for that big time. It's awesome. um, amazing, man. I, I definitely want to say this. Now this has to go away from the fitness. Thank you. But um, I never realized what you guys would have done for me in my mindset uh, is you guys help me redefine these things. And these are important to me because my my wife and I are kind of traumatized by hearing this so many times. Um, you know, we're like 24 years old, 25 years old back then. We would always hear, oh, just wait till you're 30 and you start hearing, you can start getting these nagging pains naturally, like walking up the steps, um, getting out of bed. You guys wipe that away. Like I've never felt more, again, in shape, don't have any of that crap going on. Um, they always say, just wait till you guys have kids. And this means my wife and I never drink, but they would always tell us like, oh, just wait till you have kids. You guys are going to start wanting to drink. And I would hate hearing that, not, not being a parent. Now that I'm a parent, I'm like, you guys are freaking ridiculous. I think it's just probably their perspective on having kids. Sadly, I don't want to have any kind of perspective on that. I listen to you guys all the time. And it's so, you know, uh, awesome to be able to redefine and see validation that here's like four dads, including, you know, Doug, that get to talk about like the positive impact, trying to be better husbands, better fathers. And it doesn't go into a negative space just because you all of a sudden become a parent. Um, I, I want to mention this part is where I was very ambitious. So business was something that attracted me. Unfortunately, I know um, meeting mentors, potential mentors that make six, seven figures has a heavy load on like, I'll listen to them. But one of the things that I've always heard was like, you know, getting fat, getting out of shape. It's normal when you're in the prime time part of building a business. So I would always think like, okay, I don't have to worry about getting in shape till later. Luckily, again, you guys talk about how important it is to stay in shape, like how much that's going to help not only your body, but everything else. Um, and then this is the one that always gets me emotional because I, anytime I have somebody that's about to be a parent that I know, I always want to mention, never listen to this, but I want to hear your guys thing on this. Um, one of the things the mentor taught, told me, my previous mentor, uh, when your kids are born up till I'm about they're like four years old, don't you don't even have to worry about being there. Like you don't have to be, worry about being present, being at these accomplishments because they're too little, too young to even ever remember. So go hard and work hard and be ambitious because they're not going to remember this. Never more have I been more thankful to hear you guys because if it wasn't for you guys, I would have done that. Um, my son is two and a half years old now, not trying to get emotional. Um, 
my my daughter is three months old and I've been with them like 24 seven. I've avoided trying to miss any little thing because I didn't know like, you know, um, sorry to get emotional guys. Damn, I, I didn't think I was gonna freaking do this. Um, but never more have I been more proud that I've been more present rather than trying to chase the, the ambition that I do have. Like I've been more patient on that. So I just want to say that. Um, now for the specifics, Adam, thank you for talking about your relationship with money before and after kids, because I can relate totally to that. I had a horrible relationship where I almost literally ignored my whole family because I was chasing the money for this big house, nice car, all that stuff. After kids, I've been way more patient. It's been like, we're going to get that, but home is being with them. It doesn't matter about the big ass house or the nice car. It's about like, if they're there, that's home. doesn't matter where it is. Um, Sal, you're, you're, uh, you mentioned it on like two episodes ago. You were talking about like your genuine, genuine admiration for kids. When you previously, ha- when you had kids with your um, previous wife, and then you said you'd probably never have kids until you found out you're about to have a kid. And you're like, oh, damn, I actually do want kids. Um, I relate that to that totally because I've always wanted kids, even when we were super young, my wife and I. And never more have I been known or been more confident of like, yeah, I want to be a dad till now because we have two kids. We have the boy and girl. We said no more. But there is like that itch. I'm like, damn, like I do want more kids. I know we agreed do on like, no more of them. Like, <laughs> do it. And I, I freaking love them. I love them. So I'm trying not to, but, you know, I keep telling my wife just jokes here and there like maybe we can have more. <laughs> um, Justin, uh, thank you for this because your humility, as far as being, you know, uh, when I used to listen to you guys the first time, I would always hear, uh, Adam and Sal talk like a lot. Right. So I'd always be thinking like, dang, Justin is pretty quiet. I know he talks here and there, but, um, I want to thank you for being like who you say you are. Not that Sal and Adam, you're not, but Justin, like when you say you really observe, sit back and don't need to talk. Like you really do that. It doesn't matter if you, you guys just had Jim quick on, like, it doesn't matter who the hell you guys have on the podcast. You genuinely like, don't have that ego to have to pursue that. You have to have the spotlight. And I love that because I feel like I'm like that. There was a time where I'm like, damn, maybe I have to change. And I do have to like talk a lot more. Um, but you've helped me, you know, revalidate that you don't have to be like that. Um, and I want to say this, Justin, I'm going to try not to get emotional here. Cause I'm going to talk about my dad. You remind me the most about my dad because you, you talk about being at your kids' games. You talk about uh, how it is sometimes your kid has no idea how tired you are. Sometimes there was a time you mentioned you had to volunteer and you, you basically became the main guy of volunteering to set up all this stuff. Um, that was my dad, Mr. Like do it all, be there all the time. And I didn't know at that time how special that was. Until now, I freaking brag about my dad all the time about like, I want to be like that because my dad was like that for me. And I would talk about all the time he was at the basketball games. He was the one at the practice, like even trying to shove me, like, you know, even trying to check me. Um, And he's like, you know, 60 years old doing that. And I I just want to say, Justin, you always, every single time I hear about you talking about your son, he always brings back to me appreciating my dad more. So thank you for that. And then Doug, I know I can't see you, but I just have to say this. Um, ever since I've been hooked on you guys, I, any family or friend that has like reached out and been like, how the hell, like, is this legit? I wouldn't even show you three because it's like, you know, kind of obvious as hosts. I'm like, yeah, you better, you guys better be fit. Right. As, as hosts mm-hmm. of fitness, I always talk about Doug. Cause I'm like, okay, these guys are fit, but let me talk to you guys about, you know, the, the behind the scenes, like the producer, like. Doug, your Instagram, when I show the before after of like all the years you did it yourself, then you hooked, uh, you, you followed Sal and did your journey of before after. And not only that, the retention after that, like every single family or friend that even like thinks about following you guys, they're like, oh shit, like where can I go buy their products, um, their programs? So thank you for that. Um, and again, somebody just mentioned it on previous episodes ago. Uh, you definitely, Doug, just ruined the crap out of all the other podcasts I listened to because it is true the video and the audio, like I can't listen to any other podcast anymore because it's not the same. Like I can't, you know, the, the quality, like when you guys talk about stuff, you guys actually show it. Um, can't thank you, thank you enough for that because I didn't know how much of a little detail like that can ruin any, all the other great podcasts that I used to listen to. Oh. Um, but sorry to take up all that time, you guys. I just, I had to say that because it means a lot to me. I started in this late, but I feel like 
the youngest, the strongest I've ever been in my life. And then I feel like that correlation, not only for me, but to trying to be the best husband to my wife and the best father to my kids is like, I, I owe it to you guys. Uh, so thank, thank you for that. God thank bless you, you man. Listen, Thanks, do you man, have Kevin, split? Amazing we, to hear you, man. Let's send you a split if you don't have it. And if you do, we'll send you symmetry. That's another program I think you'd like. I, I do have it, but I was thinking of... Um, if I bought maps started for my wife, can, can I get maps oh, started yeah. for my wife? Yeah, there you go. Done yeah. deal. Wife has never, never, never worked out before. Perfect. She yeah. wants to. We'll send That's that to perfect. you. We'll send that to you. You got it, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it big time. Thank you, got you for it, the man. words, Thanks Kevin. Thanks for the compliments. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right. That was, that was nice. Yeah. That was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Got me choked up a little bit. Mm, you know sure. what's funny that, about what he was saying? Not funny, but interesting. Boy, Nothing is a more powerful self-reflective tool than having kids, huh? Oh man! As soon as you have the kids, it's like, okay, I got hello mirrors. Yeah, yeah. I got to do this. You know? That and the the confidence that comes from building strength. Yeah, I mean, the process, right? The whole thing, right? Yeah. Amazing. And so, bro, I tell you what, you're, he's strong. You're strong now, dude. It's how cool is that to most of your hella life? Strong to have felt weak, insecure, afraid to even go into the weight room, to have gone to a point where you could probably go compete in a powerlifting event and do well. Oh, like yeah. that's bro he's 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 almost he's at triple body weight uh almost triple body weight deadlift very 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 few people with years and years of, of training can hit i that. can't i can't triple yeah. my body weight. Yeah, that's, that's amazing it's super impressive our next caller is justin from pennsylvania justin what's happening how can we help you hey how you guys doing yeah we're doing great another justin what's up buddy that's right that's right i'm excited to be on this i'm uh been listening to you guys since march of this year um just moved out to Pittsburgh and uh, started redoing my fitness journey as we were preparing to welcome our second child to the world. So, um, <clears throat> you know, things have changed in even two months, as you know, having a newborn, but uh, the question's still very relevant and it's really centered around sleep. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, you all could relate having kids of your own. And what I wanted to say to start is uh, I came here for the fitness, but a lot of the fatherly advice you all give is tremendous. I want to thank you uh, for all that as well. So um, how we get right into it? Uh, I've been listening to your podcast. It's been really helpful. Um, I started listening back in March, as I said. I'm a physical therapist by trade, uh, but I work in management in the home health sector where I oversee home health therapy in five states. So it's a very time consuming job, which is very rewarding. But on top of that, having two children under two, well, I mean, my second child just uh, turned two on Thanksgiving. So um, we welcomed our youngest about three and a half months ago. So between the work time, the stress, balancing the newborn and the two-year-old, obviously sleep has uh, taken quite the hit. So when I started listening to you all in March, I, I went in with uh, anabolic and I have also have bought aesthetic strength. Um, made tremendous gains by doing all three of those. Also started to refocus on my diet. Um, of course, diet has done a little bit of a slip because you just kind of eat when you have time, when you have all this going on, but I've shifted to more focusing on hitting my protein intake. Uh, the biggest link for me though these days is sleep. Uh, where I used to average about seven to eight hours a night, it's gone down to as low as three to four. Some nights I could get a little more, but of course it's interrupted depending on how the baby is uh, cooperating. So I um, wanted to just kind of circle back with this question with the new added member to the family, the lack of sleep. I'm really looking for some advice in, you know, how you can continue to maintain or continue to gain throughout that time because I think I am developing quite the negative relationship with exercise. And I'll give a little time frame. If I don't get sleep, if I miss the window of time for the gym. If I miss the gym, I am a pain, a bear to deal with. And when I'm at the, when I'm at that point, my wife's first reaction is always, I'll take the kid. You got to get to the gym now. <laughs> and so uh, when I do go, however, all that stress goes away and I try to get as much gym time as possible. So um, my typical routine is trying to get there before the day starts. But if, you know, life takes control of that, you know, I might have to shift to the end of the day or 9 or 10 p.m. even, which can really eat into my personal downtime. So all of that being said, uh, my question really is just searching for any tips and tricks in assuring that I'm not jeopardizing gains, be it physically, mentally, or in my relationships due to my lack of sleep. 
And given that you all have likely been through it with your children, I figured you might have some good advice and just want to thank you for allowing me to be on this with you all. Yeah, Justin, the, the thing to, to really consider and understand with, uh, with fitness in general, okay, so let's talk about the workout routine in general, and even diet. I mean, we can even put this in that same category. If, you, if this is something you're going to do for the rest of your life, it has to be, the only approach has to be, how can I use this in a way to improve the quality of my life? Okay. Right. And that that's going to change depending on the context of what's going on. You're in the middle of, you know, you got two, war. Little, two You're little in ones. the middle of war, dog. Yeah, you got, you got, <laughs> you got a three right. month old, you got a two month old. It's not going to last forever. And actually it's, it's, it's feels like it. I know. Cause you know, I, I just, I'm coming out of it now. I'm still kind of in it. But it won't last forever. At some, you know, within five years or so, they'll be sleeping more. You're not gonna have to worry about it type of deal. But right now, it's you're you're not getting good sleep, and it's a good reason. Your you, your child is more important than a lot of different things. So you're there for the baby. You're there for your wife. You have to modify your training, your diet, to help you to improve the quality of your life. What's that going to look like? Well, you mentioned it, stress relief. Right. Well, work out for That's that. The main focus. I don't think working out to hit PRs, to keep your gains, to build muscle is going to be a good approach. If you train like that, not only will you not get those things with the lack of sleep, but you'll also take away from the quality of life and you'll take away from all the other stuff you're trying to get. So in this type of a case, MAPS 15 love MAPS fifteen would this. be yep. kind of an ideal type of a structure where every day you're doing about 15 minutes of strength training. And I would even use the suspension trainer version of it mm -hmm. so that it's super convenient. And if you can get to the gym, then you can do the barbell version of it, but that's it. That's going to be your best bet. And what you'll find is it'll, it'll, you'll get the stress relief from it. You'll feel good. It's almost every day. I think it's a six day a week program, very low volume, obviously the intensity is moderate and it will, that's the most likely to improve the quality of your life. Any of our other programs, given what you just said, would be inappropriate and would make things worse. And so that's just, you got to just, that's how you have to look at your workouts. I, I, I Are feel, they making yeah. my life better? I feel like it's become the official like dad program. It it's is. Like, it's so, it is. It's our <laughs> avatar. Yeah, it's also 100%. perfect for something else that anybody that's been a dad has gone through this is like, sometimes you have uh, a day where you do feel good. You actually got blessed with a couple extra hours of sleep, everything, the stars aligned and you feel good for one day and then the next day is a shit show, right? And so you kind of have this, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's bad. What's cool with the way that program is written is you could actually uh, put two of the workouts yeah, together. Stack them. So like what, what I would do in your situation is when I'm feeling great, I might actually do a 30 minute workout. I'll do the, you know, Monday and Tuesday workout basically together because I, it's a day I feel really rejuvenated. I feel good. Maybe a day that I feel not as good. I might only do 15 minutes and then a day I feel really bad. That might Take be the day off. I skip. And I, and I take it off. So, and, and so it's, it's very modifiable because of you're only really doing two major exercises every day and we alternate them, uh, so that you could literally do, you know, Monday and Tuesday together or how they're laid out. And so I just think that, and to Sal's point at this point right now, you're not really, you're not, you, you don't want to be like concerned about, Oh, am I, am I still hanging on to my strength and PRs? And do I still mm -hmm. look ripped? It doesn't make any sense. You no, can't. like you just, the, the biggest thing that I heard you say, which is, I, I think we're all very similar. We all have this in common is like, I'm just a better man mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm training and I'm getting to the gym, I'm, I'm more helpful as a husband. I'm a better father. I'm in a better mood. And so if that's the truth and that's really why I'm doing it and what motivates me, then who gives a shit if I'm not squatting as much as what I was squatting seven months ago or I don't look quite as good as I did when I was getting on. Who cares? As long as I'm getting in there, I'm doing these movements that I know are supporting me and helping me. And the, the irony of that is if you can shift your focus and you actually treat the training that way, a lot of times people end up getting surprised and see strength gains or actually feel better or look better following that because now you're truly listening to your body and modifying your training to what's going on in your lifestyle. Yeah, I love I love Mass 15 for basically the structure of it and having that as kind of like a baseline for your ability to go to the gym or also at your house if you have availability for that. But for me, really, too, on top of that is just having things set up around my house. So I don't want to let my stress well up to the point where it's like, oh, I have to, uh, like, I feel like I have to get out and I have to go do this 
this workout just to regain my sanity or whatever. Like before that boiling point, uh, you know, I'm going to have my, my pull-up bar in the doorway, or I'm going to have my TRX, or I'm going to have a heavy kettlebell and just stress relief and just, stress relief yeah. and just go through the, the, the exercise, the movement, your, your muscles need that expression. And, uh, and if you know that that's a way that it, it, tampers down, it lowers that stress. Uh, just having that kind of around the house and accessible uh, and, and to what you're going to find with that approach as well in in, comp, in complement with MAPS 15 and the structure of it, it it'll actually enhance, uh, you know, you in terms of like maintaining, you know, that lean muscle mass and what you already yeah, have. That's it. That's it, man. Any, any of our other programs, you're not going to see good progress. You're not going to feel good with what you said in terms of your sleep. And, and you're, mm -hmm. you're probably... You got another eight months to a year of, you know, kind of this challenge. It'll get easier. The first three months are, man, that's always the hardest. And it starts to get yeah. easier. And then then you can start to ramp it up a little bit. But in the meantime, that's it. Mass 15, that's the way to go. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy to think, you know, this is kind of what I do for a living, teaching a sedentary, elderly <laughs> lifestyle people, you know, and I have to hear it from myself. You know, we always say PTs are our own worst enemies. And, always. And I yeah. think... Uh, I'm in my own head trying to <laughs> trying to get through all this, but yeah, it's uh, it's really helpful information. I think you know uh, it, it's something that I got to come to terms with. Just can't dedicate that much time at structured hours, and then yeah. once I get past that, and maybe this is the program that I need. So once I really you start, appreciate that. That listen, awesome. Justin, once you start to feel better from training appropriately right now, which again could be as yeah. little as 15 minutes, 10 minutes a day. Once you start to feel better, it'll reinforce yeah. uh, what we're saying. Yeah. Then you'll be like, okay, this is good. I yeah. feel good. Because right now you probably yeah. feel like shit. And the only reason why we can speak to this so well is because we're just as guilty, bro. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we, right, we all, right. through it. We all, we yeah. all thought we were different. Yep. We could yeah, go yeah. above and beyond yeah, and then yeah. got hit in the face with reality. It's Make like, sure Doug, Doug will send that over. You don't have Maps 15 already, do you? I don't. Uh, no. You do now, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Doug will send that over to you. Yeah. Game and congratulations okay. on great. the baby. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Great. It's been it's been great. The two of them are great to have. So just fitting this into my to my life will be the perfect balance for me. So I appreciate you guys taking that time. You got it, man. Thanks. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. All right. Take care. You know, you know what's funny? When you look at the data on exercise, it, it, nobody talks about this. The most, if it's done right, the most profound effects are the stress relief, the mental positive effects, the antidepressant and zeolytic effects. Right. It's more profound than the other effects that extra and those are all profound yeah but those are the most if you do People it right, don't even really talk about that, no though. because everybody focuses on the body stuff and then they they miss out on that so nobody uses exercise as the multi it's like you have a swiss it's like you have this amazing swiss army knife with 15 different top of the line tools and you're only ever using the screwdriver so you need to hammer something in screwdriver you need to do screwdriver you never pull out the other parts mm -hmm. that are so effective at all these other things that's what exercise is it's just it's not just for building muscle. It's not just for burning body fat. It does all these amazing things. Just pull out those other parts and use it that way and watch what happens. Yeah. I, I mean, I think he's going to see actually really good results. So do I. I, th I think j that he can just relate to the same. And we all went through this. I think yeah. we all, you know, we sit here all day and tell everybody else how to do things. And then, we, and then we go and do the same bullshit where we're just like, I can handle still an hour workout. Yeah. It's like, well, should I? I'm going to make it work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. You can find a lot on that page, and they all cost nothing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 